With us, the education department <coughs> for the Tantasqua and Burgess budgets. So thank you for coming, Aaron and Deb. Do you have their names? Joanne, do you remember the names from last year? <laughs> What's that? We just keep coming back. <laughs> well, it always seems to be the same people, Absolutely. doesn't it? Absolutely. How are you all? Good. How are you? Good. Great. Sorry to bring you out in school vacation week. Well, that's okay. We were both Not working today week. anyway, yeah. right? <laughs> Not for us. Not this time of year, especially. Well, that's true. I'll start with the Burgess budget. I, Whichever yeah. one's easiest. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and again, we weren't sure what you were you know hoping for or if you have any questions that we didn't answer at the public hearing um, not a whole lot has changed since then the Burgess budget if you recall we were originally at four percent we brought that down to 3.8 at the public hearing um, and uh, you know as always if anything shakes out as we get closer to June we certainly want to bring that down but um, I don't, did anybody have any specific questions that they felt like were not answered at the public hearing. This is on Burgess. Yeah. Um, well, it covers both. It's the question I called you about. Someone in the committee last week asked, and I don't think Jerry can be here tonight, right. about the, um, the vaccination rates. Oh, so yes. Yeah. Actually, there's a couple of things kept that, that um, so, um, <clears throat> and it, um, Kevin did give me a heads up there on Friday. So at that point, it was the end of the day Friday. I was only able to get some information on Burgess. So with, with we're here, but none of the staff are, so they couldn't get us information uh, today or yesterday. But I can say uh, last Friday, the nurse was able to get me information on Burgess, which was that we currently have only seven not vaccinated at all students three of them with medical waivers and four of them with religious waivers so that's less than one percent of the population in totality there's 16 that are either non or under so that would leave nine that are under vac uh, under immunized and none of those are in the mmr which i know is is the big topic right now the worry about the measles none of those under um immunized students are in the MMR categories. They're in other oh, categories, okay. you know, waiting for a second or a... Um, so I believe we heard that there were two cases of measles in Massachusetts Jesus, last year? Yeah. In Mass, yeah. Um, you know, I mean, the numbers are pretty darn low, and we certainly always have our ears open. We watch the same news, but... I, I hate to ask, because I know you're not the experts, but what does under-immunized mean? What do they need to have? And, they, and I did not bring the whole, and, and any of you who have children, uh, Kevin, you probably have, it's been a while, um, maybe even since you've heard any of these or don't have them. I mean, it's pretty structured at, you know, obviously, it's pretty clear at, you know, two months, four months, and, and all the way through to, I think, maybe age 12, 13 are, are most... There's a, a lot of the series in, in need three or four, for example, the, the MMR, measles, mumps, and rubella. I believe there's four, three or four over a 12-year period, and then there's a few other, you know, you need um, um, diphtheria. The um, hep has become an older one, hepatitis has been the polio. So a lot of them are more than one and the under is like they got the first couple and then didn't get the most recent or they're in the, you know, within um, some of the new ones. Um, the HEP I think is a two, um, hepatitis is a, is a two um, shot series. Hepatitis and, A? Um, I think it's B. No, it's B, I think. It's the B. Um, that there's, there's two and I forget how far apart they're at six months or a year apart. I know how um, many is six months. That's one. That's yeah. One I do. So, so there are some cases of under where either they have all of a certain series and not enough, or none of another one, or they're in the middle of. You know, they, they could just be one, one um, immunization short and be considered under immunized. Okay. And those are the ones typically the nurses 
uh, will certainly spend a lot of this school year trying to hunt down and get updated. Do you think, like, I'm going to ask you to speculate here, do you think as a percentage <coughs> basis that might be true for Karen Casper as well? Yeah, I think it's probably yes. ballpark, yes. Yeah. Hmm. So that was one that, that Kevin did mention um, folks were curious about or interested. The other, I'm happy to kind of maybe globally jump in. I think it's more of a Burgess question, but perhaps not. I think there was some question on, on budgeting and how we handle either mid-year changes or concerns of you know either staffing changes in the middle of the year or student placements in, in the middle of the year and do we budget, you know, anticipating, you know, kind of having a, a reserve for certain issues. I think that's something that maybe even come up, came up a little bit at the public hearing. So I, I'm happy to clear up a little on that in that we certainly, when we build the budget, we build on what we know. So we don't guess that a student that might end up in an outside placement be there and, and, and budget that. We budget students based on where they are at the time. Now, it's not uncommon that we will build a budget in October, November, and then by the time we get to starting to roll it out in January, that something has changed because out of district placements sometimes get a little bit volatile mid-year around the holidays you come back from January break and and, and that uh, it, that sometimes is when we're having a hard time uh, determining what the students best needs are but we've made changes I think sometimes as we roll them out in January and February if we felt like we missed one um, but for the most part we budget what we know for our district placements we are at that point in time projecting what the actual tuitions will be because the schools do increase rates by hopefully small percentages every year. So we're, we're guessing what we think the rates might be when we're building the budget, but we're usually pretty close. Um, utilities, we vote, I mean, we, we, we budget based on the last couple of years as utilities, and most of you have seen us kind of struggle a little bit with the electric count at the Burgess, and I think we finally got that under control. Um, so the only reserve so to speak that does help us get through sometimes especially in the special ed area is the circuit breaker account is actually a revolving fund that legally you can keep up to the full year's worth of circuit breaker receipts can roll over to the following year that's a lot of money that's uh, Burgess gets two hundred and sixty thousand dollars a year in circuit breaker money which when we build our budget we project what we think we're gonna get and we subtract that from the tuitions that we ask for, so it's netted. Um, but every um, now, actually, over the years, we would have years where the state, by year end, would have a little extra circuit breaker and would push it out to the towns, so that wasn't budgeted money. Um, and what we did a number of years ago is leave that in the circuit breaker fund for a few years. So that revolving fund serves as. Um, what we would call a little bit of a safety net if something happens during the year, which it, it often does if a student needs a one-to-one -one placement, I'm um, not a one-to-one -one aid in the middle of the year that services have changed and we did not budget it. Um, I think most of you have probably heard some of the budget meetings where either the one-to-one -one aid line goes up or the tuition line goes up and we've said it's actually short this year. The year we're in it's short, we're covering it we'll cover it with circuit breaker funds and then need to build it into the next budget. Um, for the last couple of years, we haven't felt the need if there was um, a surplus, say, you know, a move out in tuitions and money was sitting there, that's something a few years ago we would have said, okay, well, let's use that money to just pay from the general budget and leave circuit breaker funds in the circuit breaker. That's how it built to have a revolving, uh, you know, a, a, a kind of backup there. But the last couple of years, we haven't felt the need to, to build it up. We've probably got about $150,000 sitting there for something that happens in the middle of the year, special ed connected, because it can only be spent on special ed services. Um, so say, I think everyone's familiar with circuit breaker the term it's that yeah, additional funding to help offset some of the extraordinary costs of uh, mm -hmm. you typically out of district yeah. placement. Yeah, the, the biggest nuts at, nut is the out of district tuitions, the very expensive, especially the private ones. There's some small parts of the formula that give a little bit for in-house services, but it's, it's really about those Primarily. expensive 
um, tuitions out of district. So, um, you know, we look at that if something happens during the year from a special ed perspective. Um, other than that, uh, I think Kevin, you know, wondered with change in staff or teachers, very rarely do we have a teacher leave in the middle of the year that then we're replacing. We typically know that we get our notifications on retirements. Um, we almost always budget replacements, especially at the elementary level. Yeah. We can budget replacements within like the first couple of steps within two or three years of service. Um, as opposed to the senior folks who have maxed out on the Tantasqua end, depends on what the subject is. Uh, uh, there are some subjects that we can always say we're going to get within the first step some newbies. There are other subjects, um, you know, the higher order math and sciences that we're foolish if we actually special budget ed. entry level. We're not going to get mm -hmm. any in the special ed teachers, too. Mm -hmm. um, so we do that while building. Um, occasionally, we'll have um, staff long-term absences during the year. We budget, we think, especially with, a, but with Burgess, which is pretty good size budget that we can rely on the little schools Little, little elementary schools, that subline can be, I mean, one long-term absence and, and um, that flight throws them out. But for Sturbridge, we certainly always plan that there's gonna be some 30, 60, 90 day absence, mm -hmm. but that kind of at this point in time is covered within the regular subline. Um, we do on occasion get some long-term or we'll get a maternity leave that they wanna be out for the rest of the year. And what happens typically there is they've only got the first 40 days or so that's covered with sick time and then the rest is unpaid. So that unpaid starts paying for the sub that's covering them for the rest of the year. Um, so it tends to wash out that way pretty well. Now, has Burgess con considered or reconsidered school choice where you have, I think you said you were about 20 down, which obviously you're not gonna get a classroom out of that right. 20 because it's spread out but yeah have they ever have they reconsidered school choice they really haven't we, we have where we legally are required to have a right. public hearing every single year for the school committee actually to vote not to if they don't right have that vote mm -hmm. then they are by default um so every year they do to we look do. at it we look at class sizes yeah. um what's really happened is though that you know 20 or 30 student shrinkage has maybe shrunk each class Plus, by one or two right. students, which isn't enough for folks to feel comfortable to say they want to open up the doors and have one or two school choice per year because you just don't, the summer is, is there's still a lot of move ins and out. So mm -hmm. you don't know for sure if you're, and none of our class sizes are really small. Um, some of uh, our, our smaller districts, you've got class sizes of 13, 14, and you're saying, yeah, let's, let's get up to, you know, maybe yeah. an 18. Um, but none of Burgess's classes are that small yet, so we have not been to the point where we've recommended no. No. the school committee can do what they, you know, mm -hmm. want. They may vote differently, but thus far. Because there has been a bit of a trend in the lower grades of being less, isn't it? Yeah, yes. then, then typically we try to have the lower grades um, K through 3 um, to be, you know, kind of a right. 16 to 18, and the upper grades, Burgess has often had a 20 to 22 22 mm -hmm. is is kind of mm -hmm. um, where we'd say geez it's getting a little more uncomfortable if it's much more than that but uncomfortable by our standards is not necessarily uncomfortable by some of our neighboring uh, districts um, but there has been a, a you do see a little bit of a decline in enrollment in some of the younger earlier grades mm -hmm. So we watched that, but again, I, I, as I think we mentioned in the public hearing, the easier way to deal with that was we did have one class that we did decrease because we had a large bubble class right. go through and then we did so finally that say for that teacher. one, yeah, yeah that seventh, seventh teacher, right, that seventh teacher we did. its way out with the, exactly, when the kids, up. yeah. So we're at a pretty much steady six <coughs> per grade, which I think the class sizes at six are pretty respectable. I know. Look at them, make sure I'm remembering them all right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in, in kindergarten right now, on paper, kindergarten mm -hmm. looks like 16, but we don't know. We don't know until summer arrives really what the kindergarten, those are the just kindergartners that we know of. 
Um, so that number would likely be higher. Um, but we're at 17, 19, 18, 19, 20, and 23. So sixth grade is at 23 per class. Um, and, and then that class will be moving up and then everything else kind of goes down a bit. But, you know, I, I don't think we'd be to the point where we'd want to try and open up just because we have a class size of 18, 19. Those are good, those are good, good mm -hmm. sizes. So we've had a number that we're at the 22s and are now kind of going down a little bit to the 18, 19. Could you speak, please, about the impact, if any, uh, of the OSV Charter School as it starts moving up mm -hmm. through the grades mm -hmm. as it enlarges? Yep. And f uh, any impact, uh, if any, uh, with the commercial preschool uh, facility uh, on uh, Route 20. And stuff. Oh, right there yeah. next, to, next to Yankee. No. I don't feel like we've seen much on the preschool impact. No, we I still don't have think so. Schools, our schools are, are getting the numbers that they typically have. OSV, the academy, um, our newest enrollment has from Sturbridge two new kindergartners that are, they're called pre-enrolled. The state needs to let us know by April 1st who currently is on the roster. And those have been fairly consistent, two or one. So next year, the total Sturbridge residents um, at OSA will be 13. And that will be through K through grade five, moving up that first class is now going into fifth grade next year. So, are there any um, transportation implications? No, there really shouldn't. And I, I, you know, we're now going into year three, I think, with the the charter school, yes. and and that eleven to thirteen was a number we were talking about two years ago. So they they came in a little bit lower. I think there were a couple that ended up coming they back. Turned. So we're still with two more coming in at the thirteen. Um, to be honest, I couldn't tell you if they are actually billing for the transportation. I know after year one, or uh, during year one, I heard that only five or six of the, whether it was 11 or 13, actually were getting transported by them. And they, they had the legal ability then to bill us. I know you had a small line item. Um, the most they could bill is actually the per pupil cost for us to transport the rest of the Sturbridge. So that stayed pretty low. Um, whether they actually sent that bill, I don't know. We'd have to check with Barbara. Um, you know, it's 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 possible that they didn't for just a, the, the, that answer. small amount. But I wouldn't think since we're still in that 11 to 13 range, and I think in Sturbridge, mm -hmm. half of them bring them and pick them up themselves. So I don't think the transportation is going to be a, 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 an issue in the next couple of years. We're still waiting to see what really happens next year with the reimbursement. It seems to be sort of a moving target. Um, when, when I tried to dig into the governor's budget, because last year and the year before, they were supposed to reimburse 75% in one year and then four years of 25%. There was nothing in year, the second through fourth year. And even the first year, that 75% pool was only funded at 56%. So the amount was very small. The governor's budget lays out, definitely has an in, a significant <coughs> increase in the pool of dollars. <coughs> and then their intention was to change the model and reimburse for only three years, but at, I think it was 160 mm -hmm. and then 40. So, but that would mean that maybe all of the two new ones you get wouldn't would cost more. But I don't know if they actually have, if that pool is big enough then to move into that second tier and then the third. When I looked at the latest state figures, it doesn't look to me like the, the house increased the charter pool dollars even more. It doesn't look to me like that's been applied yet when I looked at the latest cherry sheet. So um, I'll, I'll keep an eye on that and, and look and see. But it, it, it's really sort of this kind of moving target of whatever the funds are there, regardless of the formula, they're not fully implementing the formula. And then if all of a sudden they finally get the funds to implement it in another year, well, m your, your Sturbridge is almost beyond that, that first year hit when you took 11 in one year. Three years later, we're probably beyond where we can actually get reimbursement for. So it's really mostly the new ones that 
the new formula should be giving you some reimbursement for to kind of help you wean on, so to speak, um, funding it. We're waiting to see in another year, two, I guess, really, yeah. Yeah. Um, what the impact is at Tantasqua. Uh, because they're supposed to go to grade eight. Right. It's unknown now how many of those five member town grade six OSV folks will stay there till eight or will move up to Tantasqua. Mm -hmm. They're gonna have to move someplace by grade nine. So we'll be very curious to see if any of them come back in at, at grade seven. Um, and even then, Erin and I were talking the other day, I'm preparing for a kind of little debate in education with the, with the charter folks to because I'm not sure that they expect that those students where they've given something to the elementary district for the first couple of years realize that there's a whole new district that the students are entering at grade seven. So oh. are those charter reimbursements going to be there for year one and two of those? Because we certainly that's the won't battle. We're gonna... to say that's what should happen <laughs> sure. as opposed to just all of a sudden they show up on Tantasqua's assessments without any reimbursement. That would be um, a real disappointment. Yeah. So we'll be touching base with our legislators next year to warn them and let them know that that's coming. In the coming years, um, well, let me start over. Being seasoned professionals as you are, uh, you may, as in other fields, just get a feel for things. There's no data, but you, you kind of get a sense of things. Now, allowing for the, the locale, me, meaning OSV is right here, mm -hmm. and most of their students are young. They're the, they're the short ones. <laughs> Looking ahead now some years, do you think there's a likelihood, a serious likelihood, that the charter school will simply be in the air in the same way that Bancroft and Worcester Academy and Notre Dame mm -hmm. Academy and some of the others are. They're just there and they do their thing and mm -hmm. you're just here and you do your thing. Mm -hmm. But there's a newness factor now. So it's a, it's, a, it's a wordy question, but do you have any thoughts or even just sort of intuition in that regard? I think we've seen kind of the same typical numbers entering as new kindergartners, kind of that one to three, depending on the town. So it seems to us, at least right now, um, it's hard to know the future. Will they go to the state and look to expand, if not up, from beyond the 40 per grade that their charter has approved? It's hard to know. They might be finding exactly as you say, kind of the niche, the spot that, that fits well, that works well for them. So we've pretty much consistently seen low numbers, at least you know in the three years that we've been here. So I think um, for some folks, they're choosing it, it's the right fit, but clearly with those numbers, the, the majority of children are attending. Burgess, but yeah. it's it's hard to tell. It's a no, unique, yeah, it's it a is, unique, unique environment. Unique so. I mean, yes, given the first three years, it kind of seems it's to be fairly steady. So that you that you would think that I don't know whether it's four years or five years or three years, depending on that funding mechanism. In a couple of years, everyone should have bitten the bullet, figured out how to fund whatever that initial pool of 10, 11, 12, 13 kids is, and then everything would kind of just level off, and it's just, yes, just sort of there. Yep. Hopefully at a level steady mm -hmm. um, enrollment that makes it a lot easier to handle, and it's, it's kind of the newness that has got us all. But it's too early, we'll have to see a couple more years before we dare crystal ball it. Thank you both. Yeah. Do you know if they're maxed out at their capacity? Uh, I'm yes, pretty sure that they're, they're, filling, yeah, they're filling their filling slots and then having waiting lists. I, I thought, well, at the first year they had a lottery for yeah. sure. I don't know yeah. about, yeah. I haven't I really paid still that much still, lottery. I, I don't so know what well. the waiting list is, but I think they're still, mm -hmm. and, and I, even the last couple of years, we did have one or two throughout the five town that in the middle of the year got in, which means, a, you know, a slot somebody opened up, back. whatever, somebody went back or, um, or someone declined the mm -hmm. initial 
So I, I think they've got a waiting list. I, I don't know if it's as big as it was in the, in the mm -hmm. first year. Do you know if any, you said there's two that you know of going to kindergarten? So this is their third year? Are they siblings of somebody who might be there? Because um, that's I, a two year gap now, that's often the case. I don't think so, but I could be wrong. Hmm. Um, the only thing I could confirm is Mrs. Pelly, the Burgess principal, saw the names this morning and didn't know them at all. Oh, okay. So they're likely just coming in mm -hmm. um, as kindergartners, they weren't, if she had had older siblings, the last name would have meant something to mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. So I think they're just coming in, and and of the ones that are in, you know, a handful of them were homeschooled. They were homeschooled, oh, oh, oh. and then saw this opportunity. Which so it wasn't oh, that they okay. left Burgess to go there; they were homeschooled and then took advantage of that. And then siblings throughout the five district, we will see a, a repeat of a family name. Yeah, but so you want to know it's the third year, there could be a sibling once, going yeah. in. Yeah. yeah. The two coming in did not, no, did did not, not have not a Not at Okay. Hmm. Other questions? Just out of curiosity, if anyone knows, are they going to continue expanding using the type of units they have, or are they going to make a brick and mortar investment and put a type I, of permanent structure? I don't structure? know. Uh, I don't know. Because it's like a trail Private. park over there. So. Yeah. yeah. I, know that's, I don't mean that. I mean, it's all modular. Well, yeah, they're so modulars, yeah. That's, a, yeah. that's true. They must add every year. Do yeah, they, they have to. They? Yeah. For the I thought their intention was to put to build something more permanent. I think that was oh. what we initially heard, <laughs> that there was going to be a, some structure. But yeah. I haven't seen anything on that. I was just curious. It just gets longer and longer, I guess. Huh? I don't know. I only go there when it's time to vote anyway. I know. Well, they want to any other questions on Burgess budget? Ready to vote it? Yeah. Do you have the exact number, Kevin? Yeah. It's actually in our book. It's at line 88. Oh, yes, yeah, so it is. That's true. Yeah, it, it changed the night we were at the. Yeah, yeah but I think it, this reflects the change, doesn't it? It does. It's $40,000 lower than the budget that was presented. And public hearings were dead in the subsequent year. That's right. The meeting was reduced by $40,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'd make a direct the Burgess Elementary School line item, um, I guess, as the identified line 88, as $11,770,442. Is there a second? I'll second. Karen, any further discussion? All in favor? There's what, six of us tonight? Six zero. Thank you. All right, moving on to the Tantastical budget. Talk a little, well, I don't, don't know again if anyone has any questions with you know specific line items or issues in there. I was anticipating, and Kevin confirmed, um, that we could have a little conversation about the SRO program and, the oh, yes. and how that's going, um, which is. Uh, not at this point really a budget discussion right um but uh, at know, least not this budget there are other questions mm -hmm. first or if you'd like me to chat about that a little I bit have questions about the budget just curiosities and when i see large increases from percentage wise from year to year i always go back a year two years three years to see if maybe it went like this and it's yeah. coming back up but i see uh just a, and i'm not picking on anybody just uh maybe there was a staffing increase at the senior high school Custodial salaries went up 15% this year. Over two years, though, you can see what they've done like this, but it's still significantly higher than it was in 18. And I'm yeah, just curious. a couple of thing, things are happening one. in the custodial um, world. Um, and I, if I am being repetitive, I apologize. I forget what we talked about at the public hearing at this point. So do I. That's uh, why I'm asking <laughs> this question. So some of the ups and downs, though, that you're seeing is we actually have, over the last couple of years, had turnover had some some pretty senior staff on both sides of the street junior and senior leaving so that gives you the the drop but then immediately you start crawling because their their pay scale goes up for six years so you bring somebody in an entry every year for six years we've got a couple of folks going up where we had had a number of years of everyone senior at the top step and it was just a cola increase well, so 18 to 19 even down right so now, now that, so yes. somebody retired we were able to fill them at a lower rate 
Now we're going up. And that's why I was comparing to 18, no, not to 19, because I don't want to compare yeah. to one that went down. Right. Yeah, yeah, some of that's happening. And we're we also, we, well, we've also got a couple of things. We put a little bit more than in the past couple of years in um, overtime because we are having um, some, you know, new age bumps in the buildings. And, of course, nothing ever go break, breaks when we're in session. <laughs> it's always nights and weekends that another joint first and and we need to have staff in there cleaning up and replacing the joints we are certainly um, trying to be proactive with replacing joints and elbows and wrapping mm -hmm. them um, but we also um, have it's sitting in the senior high but in reality I think the bump is going to be transferred to the junior high um, I'm not sure if I referred to the change in the the supervisory model of the mm -hmm. custodians and maintenance where we had when we opened the building we had one person for each two people one at each side of the um, mm -hmm. street and then for the past five or six years because they both left at about the same time we tried what we are now acknowledging was a foolish attempt it was an attempt <laughs> at efficiency <laughs> um to be efficient and save money and had one person in charge of both sides of the street both the custodians and the maintenance it was too much it was unrealistic um we have had change in staff so we wanted to make a change and weren't sure whether we were wanted to go with a model of having one person in charge of all of the cleaning and one person in charge of all of the maintenance staff uh, we ended up all agreeing to go back to the one person in charge of the junior high staff, one person in charge of the senior high, um, obviously kind of a more senior or more plant manager um, standalone at the senior high, but a working foreman at the junior high, so someone who would supervise maybe half time and clean half time. But when we built the budget, we weren't sure what the model was going to look like, so the bump is in the senior high for that that junior high working foreman person so we'll transfer that at the beginning of the year once the position is in place and put it in the junior high side of the street um, but that's that's the biggest increase there is getting another kind of half time equivalent of supervision um, the only you know good we're pleased with mm -hmm. at least over the years we've gotten the staff on both sides of the street which are under what they're one unit they're one contract years ago really you know never the two would meet and junior high staff only worked in junior high and now we at least have managed to change that over the summers we've got them all on one side of the street for a month getting through the buildings complete and then all of them moving across the street which works out really well and having a little more cross training than we had but mm -hmm. um it's a, it's been a fun couple of years in, in maintenance and cleaning and i had one other question yeah um Worcester County retirement has seen significant increase each of the last two years. To what do you it, attribute that? The, that it, and I've asked my peers, and they have seen similar. I don't know if Sturbridge has. The town a, did had a bit right. of a bump too. And I don't. I, I it's don't, not as big as they yours. They just but. set their rates, and on we go. And I would say the percentage of over two years, our it's twenty six percent. Pretty mm -hmm. similar to the Sturbridge, where the teachers aren't in that pool. Um, but it's a huge bump and it was definitely more than I anticipated um, and I don't know part of me wonders if it's if it's kind of how the the pension has been managed if 18 came in under budget they're running actually, short um, yeah and it, it, side went up seven and a half percent well this went up uh, this went up more though 14 percent this year and 11 percent yeah. last year it's yes yeah, and, 13, and I, yeah. I, I, I don't know seven. what's behind their formulas mm -hmm. but that's a number that pretty much the last three years I will budget, we'll start presenting the budget in January, and then I get the real numbers on January 31st and have to go back and say, we missed it again. Maybe they're just being sneaky and trying to cover the deficit. Who knows? Uh, I, I, I know, I would not be surprised if there's some deficits in that pension plan that they're they're trying to get everybody back up to. Big yep. deficits. Yep. Hmm. Thank you. Yep. Other questions? Can I just add, it's, it's not directly related to the line item budget here, but it is kind of related to the Tantasco district overall, and that's the Warren article with the windows. Good. <laughs> Have you guys seen the Warren article? No. This is what's concerning me. <laughs> so I just, as I was sitting there, was getting, I know when we sent, the school committee voted their February meeting. 
And the day after I sent the article itself, the exact wording for the article, out to the five selectmen, I got a response from Ted at the time, it was Ted, acknowledging receipt. Mm -hmm. So I, tomorrow, I'm now a little nervous. And well, want Jeff to is here. Out. Is it on the warrant? Oh, okay. it is on there. Okay. All right, great. We just haven't seen the whole warrant at all yet. That's fine. What is the number, though? I mean, yes. it was $2 million two, maximum. It, yes. It, which it still has um, remained at the $2 million um, maximum. We do anticipate having a pretty or, or a much harder number prior to the May 7th date that MSBA will need to know what they're sending forward to the school building authority for final approval. I think our preliminary work has it Honestly, pretty it, darn close. Pretty darn close in to fact, that. In fact, one million. of the estimates was a little bit over, and we were already sitting there looking at what we might want to pull out. Because while it's all doors and windows, when they were building the initial package and specs, they did say, okay, well, it's doors and it's door related. If you want to update your security, your your entrance security system, or um, you know, where would you be interested in having safety glass? Um, yeah. So yeah. we had we're going through that right now, and and everyone knows that two million is the number that we need to be at or under, mm -hmm. because otherwise the the, the articles won't be viable articles. We can't be coming. How old are those windows? Town meeting asking for more. We were hoping it'd be lower. I believe they're the original windows. Aren't Say they? that again. How old? How old are they? Oh, um, the windows. Are they they're all or, yeah. They're all original. original. So I think the, the building is was in seventy five. In that area? Well, I think it, I thought I just read somewhere that it opened in 75, so it was Heating probably the built. outdoors. Yeah. <laughs> 74 ish. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, yes. So I think the project's going to be pretty close to the 2 million. Mm -hmm. We have a meeting next Wednesday with the Tantasco Budget Subcommittee to try to lock down how much of Tantasco reserves between E&D and school choice that they would be willing to put toward. And it's looking like it will probably be more than the original plan. Um, originally, that was looking at, I had certainly said to them and publicly that probably about 500,000 of EMV would be comfortable putting towards, which would leave, and I think that's the email that went out, that it could leave 400,000 mm -hmm. left to be um, borrowed and assessed out to the towns. If that happened, that would end up with an ask for Sturbridge of $48,000 a year for five years. I would consider that worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. I would consider at this point best case scenario nothing. And that's what we're gonna have a conversation next week to say how comfortable are they with bringing down E&D and school choice, because school choice is, is got a, a decent balance too. I'm not sure it's enough to go all the way down and cover it all. But I think it'll be less than that forty-eight thousand. You know, it could be half of that or less. Um, you know, maybe just you know, it might be just a two hundred thousand dollar borrow just to make sure the district stays with enough reserves that it's not coming to towns if something happens. So that meeting is next Wednesday that the subcommittee will meet and then the full committee and and kind of will get some direction we'll make some recommendations but get some votes from them and be able to have you know some more but you really won't have a firm number of people after may 7th we, we won't know for sure what msba yes, is voting yeah. until may 7th yes yeah now how long is the um, artificial turf going for that's a 10 year it's 10 so years okay. year two Three. Yeah, and I knew it was early. Year three, and, and I see no reason why. I mean, we committed, we promised that that was something that we were just going to pay that payment. Right, no, I know. I was just. Capital plan. Yeah. Right. I just, I, I couldn't remember if it was five or ten years. Yeah, time of flies, so. Mm -hmm. It does. Does so, that require some major maintenance after, what, five years? Oh, no, the major maintenance isn't until uh, every 12, 12 or so years that the actual carpet is recommended be replacing. I know Wachusett's probably got almost 15 years, but now they're desperate, they re and they only have one field. We're hoping that two gives us a good 12, 13. Um, after in next year's budget, actually, there's a little extra money in the maintenance, the grounds maintenance, um, because you do have to put 
big, big, not little, fill, really big bags of fill in every, every three years or so. Um, but the carpet replacement, and, and we kind of have a plan for that. We have, since we put that turf in, before we put the turf in, all the gate fees for all the football games and the basketball games went to an athletic revolving fund. And every year we put about 25000 almost all of what came in, to the budget. We stopped that three years ago. So all the money that's there is still going to that revolving fund and accumulating with the hopes, my hope anyway, whether I'm here or not, that when, that, when those carpets need to be replaced, mm -hmm. that at least one of them have could be money. funded from that revolving fund that's been uh, built up with gate fees and and if there's another one that needs to be borrowing or, or ask or help replacing we'd be in better better shape than are there any plans to do a similar type field across the street at the junior they're, high school they're oh. not. that's unfortunate well if i had five towns <laughs> coming and offering to pay for it i know of a couple of principals that would, would love, love it because yeah yes. those fields are, are tough they are. They get and a lot are, of yeah, use. Yeah, especially that. I mean, we a year or two ago we did mm -hmm. kind of reseed and regrade that the soccer field, yeah. the one right at the beginning there that gets the most. Um, they just get use. so much use. Yeah, that, that they've. And really then they go dormant all summer. They really yeah. hard to. Yeah. Kevin, I just have one more question. All right. I guess you have the answer. This is the third I year or four it. years where the actually paying us for the privilege of actually putting the funds into the new high school, well, not new high school, yep. the existing high school. <laughs> yep. and, yeah, we decided um, we can't call it the new high school. Hmm? How are we accounting for that in here? That's what we would discuss. Yeah, well, I had a letter, which I can't find now. Yeah, it came from the where, treasurer. You, still, you have other debt exclusions, correct? Yes. yes. So what DOR says they're doing, and then again, it's not my business, but DOR did say when it started that what's supposed to happen is these refund checks, I think you're getting the year three, this, yeah. like this week. So there'll be two more because it's five years. Those refund checks are supposed to go toward any other debt exclusion that oh, you have oh. on the book. So there's a couple of, well, there's one town that never voted the debt exclusion. So that has truly been miscellaneous revenue for the last three years. Um, and then a second right. town that, that is paid off whatever other debt they had. So it's becoming kind of a miscellaneous funding stabilization. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. So I think it's kind of part of your probably tax re. I would be surprised if it's showing up as any kind of revenue for you. No, I haven't um, seen it. That's why. Right. If it shows up as a revenue, then it, somehow it's, it's supposed mm -hmm. to be applied to whatever other debt exclusion you have going there and kind of lower keep that uh, tax okay. rate a little bit lower. Oh, okay. Yeah. But that's a big number in another year or two. No, this year it's 240,400. Yeah, uh, so yeah it's over 200. Up, right, and then I think there's another one after that. So yeah, there's one more after probably that's another, 426, Yeah, that's, that's a yeah. big chunk. It is a pretty big number, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So let's talk a little bit about the SRO. Okay. <laughs> so we, Erin and I, we think we have been successful, but we still have to go mm -hmm. through town meetings to know for sure, um, in, in doing what we told the chiefs we would do. So uh, Chief Ford had this, uh, what I think is a really good idea, to partner with the other four towns, and if we could get the other four towns to give some additional funds, they're already a bit involved in their elementaries, whether it's with, not, not really with formal SRO training, but various activities. So the, the ask was if we could get each of those four towns to be able to supply some more um, police resource to come up to the Tantasqua schools to work again under kind of coordination with, with Chief Ford that that ultimately would put Tantasqua in a position of having really more than 1.0. If Sturbridge continued to support the 1.0, we've just started that. We love our SRO mm. already at Tantasqua. Great job. Um, he's working out really well, been a couple, of, I guess time does fly because it's a couple of months now, yep, right? since February. Almost February. two months. Yep. Um, and and there have been a few things that the other towns have been able to send um, officers up and, you know, either drills or the High Five Fridays and where all, they're all, all hands on deck. Um, so we do have in the other four elementary budgets a total of $35,000 more in in police SRO, um, thirty-five thousand per town. No, no, total, total, right, total. total. So, but the kicker is, 
all Let's of see. those sure. chiefs, none of them are going to hire another person to do this work. They're mostly part-time officers that they're going to have more hours to. And year one might just be for training, but training or a little oh. bit of time up. So um, in sitting with them, we sat with the four of them and you know said, okay, this is the plan. You're going to get your own questions from your own finance committees. Um, so just know these are the numbers we put in the budget. Um, but when they sat there and started calculating what their hourly rates are that they pay, which is very different than what we pay um, for the, you know our full time versus their part time, it varied a little bit among, amongst town, but all of them were significantly more hours than we would get for say $10,000 a year in Sturbridge for police officers. The hours were significantly, when we added them all up together, um, there was about another 0. 0.6 to 0. 0.7 FTEs worth of hours from the, uh -huh. those four communities that would be available. Um, and while maybe not every hour ends up at the at the secondary schools, because you know they certainly will continue to support or enhance the elementaries, a lot of it would. And um, I, I, we like the model. Mm -hmm. We're anxious to see it grow. Um, we certainly know we've already had some instances where, say, a Brimfield police officer was in Holland and, and helping them with, you know, some of bus evacuation day, or we could see a day where maybe the Sturbridge SRO is, is helping Brimfield Elementary for some event or something, and, and that they're kind of getting to know each other. Um, but we've definitely had um, more presence from all four towns little at a time up between the high school and junior high and the different events uh, with the one coordinator and the Sturbridge being the main anchor and the coordinator as it should be. Um, we we like it on paper. We mm. like what we've felt so yep. far. Yep. Um, so we're, we're hoping that, that we will get the chance mm. next year to really test that out. Um, initial, again, we haven't gone into town meetings yet, but the public hearings, all of the elementary schools um, and, and most of them have had finance committee attendance and we have not gotten any resistance on, on having those dollars there. Um, so I, we're, I, we're optimistic we're, and think that those the four of them are going to get the additional funds. And the, the chiefs lo love taking the regional school kind of community model and applying it through the police <coughs> departments, which is why, as Deb said, um, maybe the Tantasqua SRO was down helping Brimfield, but that's a day that Holland sends up a police officer to the high school. That they'll all become, they'll all participate in SRO training, which is specific, but also help support each other as they interact in primarily the Tantasqua schools, but also maybe some uh, reciprocal support down at the elementary schools. And uh, by putting it in our elementary budgets, we, we felt that it, it would call it out as a school, re, a true school resources versus a town. Yeah, that for was, the elementary. in talking to the chiefs, there were, there were at least a couple that preferred that where the, you know, the thought was, well, what, you know, you could just increase your police line item. And the concern was that, you know, when push comes to shove or things got tough, that it might be a little too easy to have the police department just use that money for something not school related. But if it's sitting in the elementary school budget to be used mm -hmm. for school resource or associated um, costs, it, it would be more committed to schools. So that was kind mm -hmm. of helping them out in figuring out how to make this work and make sure they really did get the funds that we wanted to be earmarked for schools. So if I'm hearing you correctly, we're still funding 100% of the officer at Tantasqua. And now the other four towns are putting aside between everybody $35,000 mm -hmm. for the other four towns to occasionally use that money to, to come to, them to, 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 come to be up. in addition to, to supplement, not supplement, complement, to be in addition to the 1.0 Sturbridge officer. And is there any commitment on time, how much time each of the towns are willing, or are they still just sort of? Well, and again, a year one, I, for example, the number of hours that you can get for Brimfield officers for $10,000 will be slightly different than the number of hours you can yeah. get for Holland's $10,000, but it's a lot more hours than Sturbridge $10,000. Right, but is that $10,000 Brimfield officer going to be split time between Brimfield Elementary and the time? No, I think it's going to be, a, though. I think there may be some, but I think 
the majority of it will be Tantasco because there's already been okay. officer presence in, in, in the elementary schools, just kind of embedded in their regular police officer budgets. So we're hoping, expecting that that presence would continue and now this additional money uh, is primarily for secondary presence, but could be used if they need a little extra elementary presence or this program's in place that they didn't have enough to do. Kevin? I, I guess, I, I may have misunderstood when we met earlier about this. Mm -hmm. I thought we were getting $10,000 from each of the other four towns, so $40,000 total as a contribution. So now we're at thirty-five. Right. so what changed? So the, in reality, towns? Wales. You saw the Tantasqua assessment for Wales, which is eight nine percent increase, mm -hmm. realistically we couldn't put a ten thousand dollar figure there. Plus, it's so, so we knocked that one down to five. They're the smallest community. Um, so it, we get ten from each. From the other three. three five. Yes. Five. Yep. Yes. So who is their supervisor? Is it still their own chief, even yes. though it's yes. in their yes. Yes. the school budget? Yes. yes. And, and we'll, once it's all passed, I'll work out the bookkeeping mechanism as to how each town, each town accountant wants to handle it. You know, whether they charge the school, the school line directly, or there be some monthly or quarterly bill transfer from the police department to, or from the, the school, school line to the, to the police line to reimburse. That, that will depend on each, each town's accountant as to how they would rather do that bookkeeping. I have just an additional question to that particular item. Is it treated as detail work or regular hours because right if it's detail work the town gets the 10 percent administration that that's their call i don't believe it'd be considered detail work i think they have part-time oh. officers who may only work 20 hours a, a week mm -hmm. and can now work 25 or, or 30 hours a week i, I did not hear no, that they were planning either. on i would think that because they were town work. they were they actually they, thought it was well, a good I, amount i mean of if the towns are looking to make i don't you know yeah. it's, it's yeah. potential to happen so i because that would that's, reduce yeah. to 0.6 or 0.7 to maybe 0.4 no i don't think that's the case because they sat there and started doing the math yeah. on, based on what their hourly regular rate, hourly rate, rate is and we're throwing out how many hours they could get in a year based on that hourly rate, and it wasn't an inflated Wait, detail no. rate. So, in theory, if all the other four towns pass this, mm -hmm. then we're gonna have an additional availability of 0.6 officers from the other four towns. But there's nothing in place yet on how that's gonna look. If they are, I mean, they're committing in theory that they're mm -hmm. gonna come to Tantasqua. Mm -hmm. And we're all, it's all on good faith, which yep. I think yep. it is there. Yep. Yep. Um, but that's where we're at in the, yep. in the stage right yep. now. Right, okay. yep. right. Yep. And Sturbridge would be the anchor, and it would, it would the initial meeting, certainly once the, the, hopefully the budgets get passed with that in there, to pull the chiefs together again and work out all of those details. Is it going to be uh, every two-week schedule, a month at a time? How, how are those details going to work So it's out? still sort of a joint venture with all the police chiefs of the five towns. Yes, yes absolutely. It couldn't yeah. happen without so support of all five police chiefs. Yeah. Hmm. And do the kids like it? Having the SRO? Kids love I it. Think so. Kids love it. I they, think I think I think he's been very well received. He has on both sides of the street. And and Burgess Hillary's done a tremendous job. Absolutely. So um, years, you yeah. know, it's it's been a great model. But so far, um, Garrett has been a, a huge asset, um, and and the kids are very happy. Hmm. Any other questions on? The SRO or the budget or the Tantasco oh, budget? The mm -hmm. Let me see. my notes. How does the budget give you about $9,000 more in Chapter 70 money? Ooh. What, what's that? Who did? The house, house. budget that oh, came house out budget. last week. Looks like Sturbridge is about up $9,000 in Chapter 70. Wow. It wasn't up that much yeah. to begin with. So right. It was 10 additional dollars on top of per student 20 that right. the governor had given. But we'll see. The oh. Senate's still going to we'll do take the work. It. So then I would make the motion that we approve the amount of $7,199,324 for Wine Islands 89 and 90, which is the Tantasqua Town Share and Tantasqua Transportation Assessment combined. I'll second. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? 6-0. What about the uh, 
charter school uh, yep. fine item. I didn't. I didn't want to include that under that oh, no. motion. So I just didn't, didn't want to forget it. Yeah. I make the motion that we approve line item 91, the charter school transportation, at $6,000. Is there a second? I'll second that. Easy for Joey. Any, any discussion? Okay, all in favor? That's 6 0 as well. Okay, so. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you much. We're all done. Any, any other random questions for the education department here? And we'll see you on Thank the you, third, as always. Think, right? Tell me the third. Monday. Yeah, third. June third, yes. Yeah. Yeah. June 3rd. I know there's a long way to go before that. Makes me nervous. May, you're not talking about May third, are you? <laughs> a lot of meetings Thank between now much. and Thank there. you very much. Yeah, lots Thank of you. time. And you, have you met our new administrator? We have not. Oh, oh well. Hi. Please do take that time. All right. <clears throat> Let's go back to the beginning. See what we have in This is a Kevin move. The beginning. Can you do you want to do you want me to do you want me to follow along with the file? Yes, yeah, so did you get um Barbara's I did and I spoke to Barbara as well. So the they're um increasing the Good night. Good night. Thanks for coming out. The Board of Health agent from whatever it is, 60 something thousand to $72,000. Is this based on uh, negotiations of her salary or his salary? Yes. I believe it is, yes. Where is this? Uh, yeah, Board of Health. So this is. This yeah, line, uh, I believe we did not vote the first line, right? Yeah, and which line is that? Uh, we did. 101. Let me. Uh, Oh, sorry. Okay. So, Madam Chair, one, one I've question. already got the math done. Yeah. So, this is a department head, so this changes like the merit line item. It and will. All that stuff. Oh, yes, yes, it will. Yeah, okay. So, I don't have that we don't have new that number, part. but I do have the numbers for the Board of, for the board of Health. If you want, give me one uh, second. Yeah, so the Can department you, head would be 72000 Yep. So, even? What, yes. What line item? I'm sorry. Well, it's part of 101. And then that total salary becomes 143,898. Which line? Joanne, so that's the total salaries. And what was the actual department head salary? I'm sorry, I just- 72. 72 even. Oh, okay. So 101, you're saying, becomes what, so I, I don't have the line item. So so the department salary is seventy two thousand, and then the total salaries becomes one forty three eight ninety eight. That doesn't seem right. Doesn't seem Why doesn't right. it sound right? Seems too high. No. Seventy two plus twenty five. Uh, yeah, we're only going from seventy two plus twenty five. So it should might be one forty. I wonder if it's one forty three yeah, total. Be, then this becomes ninety seven here for one hundred one. Eight. That's ninety seven eight oh seven. No, I'm not there yet. Okay. Unless we're adding in the expenses. Let me go there. What, what page is that? 33. Okay. So if you go to page 33. Yep. Okay, I got you. Yeah, but don't count that. Remember, that's all of our budget together. That includes. The, um, I understand that. Yeah. Uh, okay. But I, can you guys give me one second to open up the file? So it's 144. <laughs> new salary does this affect anything in the unclassified items as well as far as like insurance so you know what when I spoke to Barbara and and she's still not feeling that well she's gonna be when she's back in the office she'll give me the numbers but we didn't talk about those specifically Kevin okay. but um, I mean why would it affect the insurance if it was full-time Jeff maybe you can shed some the 72 will not be on day one That's after they receive their RS so there's going to be a couple oh. months where the 72 isn't the 72. Okay. So there's some money in there. Okay. I don't know how much, and I don't know what the other impacts are, but it's not 72 on so. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that? So it's contingent on they're getting their, re was it registered, registered sanitarian, sanitarian um, right. 
license or whatever it's called. He's going to get 68 to the CRS. Right, I understand that, yeah. So, but that probably won't be by July 1? Right. Unless it is. That's pretty quick. Six months to do it. Right. Um, so anyway, the the new line item, um, I guess line 101, is 97,807. Yeah. 97,807, okay. And what, what would be the total then at the bottom? And then that total is... 109 218. Okay. So, discussion on uh, that? Well, we so need to get a motion. $144, right? We would need to add to the merit line item. I'm just doing 2% of. Where's the supply? Well, actually, no, it's 2% of 12000 So, that's what? $240. Because the difference between the 60000 the steer and the 72000 is really the, the two percent of that difference is what would get added to the Listen. merit line item. Mm, yeah, too bad I, I I should have put a formula in here to automatically calculate that. Where is the public health inspector? Is that in a different department head salaries? If people, it's department you know, it's separate. So it's a different place. Yes, it is. Okay, that's all well, I was you're looking at the detail, or what are you? Looking yeah, at I, was, I, w I referred to the detail, and I see this number for the public health inspector is not included. Well, that's what, under right, board of that's health. Why yeah, I understand. Oh, it's a different. Uh, yeah, it's I, different. I figured it out. It's, it's under so one of the update. There's like four departments four. in the board of health page. Yeah. Yes. That's line one hundred six right. for yeah. public health. And we already inspector. voted on that. We voted on that already. Yeah. We did. So, so, and we voted on everything else. So the only we have to vote on line one hundred one. So we have to vote on line one hundred one, right? Right. I don't. I don't have to re-vote the others because I voted those line items individually. Right. right. I mean, the bottom line will change, but we did already vote those line right. items. Yeah. So. Do we have to have a motion to rescind our no, previous vote? We didn't vote on it. No. Oh, okay. Good. Okay. <laughs> no. So I'll make the motion. Okay. To. Um, to accept line item 101 at 97,807. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Six zero. Okay, let me write that one down. Now, do you want to go back and do that merit pay, which we would have to reconsider, well, or do you want to wait for Barbara to give us? The yeah, do you want to wait for Barbara, or, or unless you got? Uh, well, I mean, the difference is really twelve thousand dollars, roughly between eleven thousand five hundred, right? It's the number we've written, no, yeah, eleven thousand eight seventy two. It was sixty thousand one twenty eight. Now we're going to seventy two thousand just to make it even easy. The difference is twelve thousand. So two percent of that twelve thousand dollar difference is two hundred and forty dollars. Two hundred and forty bucks. It's so if you add the two hundred and forty dollars to the merit based incentive, it should cover that difference. In there. Okay, yeah. if you're comfortable. So what is the number, Kevin? So well, it would be your down merit based incentive should become twenty seven thousand seven hundred and forty one dollars. Say that twenty seven seven thousand seven hundred and forty one. Now that we would have to we'd have to reconsider, reconsider that one and revote. I don't I, I don't have my little calculator, so I don't know how it changes the bottom line. Well, I can tell you I, yeah. because I have the file up here. I can tell you. Oh, what, okay. Do you have it? Yeah. Um, did so I would make a motion to reconsider. Wait, wait a minute! I have to make sure you were here that day. Okay. Yeah. What, when did we vote that? Three twenty eight. That I have that we voted. Yeah, we voted three twenty eight by a, a vote of seven to two. See, Kevin was here. And did he vote in the affirmative? I don't know the answer to that question. I would think I did. I think Good you question. Did. Let's see. Right, because you have to have voted have in the to affirmative the to re vote to reconsider. Yeah. At some point, my. Who owns this account? Is this Joni's? No, it's not. It's. I think it's. Is it Bruce? I've been Bruce's. Yeah. Right been. Yeah, it's Bruce. You need me to check the minutes. No, I've, got, I've got my notes here. Um, so, 
Now, I, I have it, um, wait a minute. It's 28. Matching grant. Did we vote on that? Might Seven to two. Yes, but Kevin was opposed. Yeah, I Kevin, was. you were opposed. Mm -hmm. You and Mike. Right. <laughs> so I'll take, take back. Right. That's fine. So I'll Such I'll make the motion I to um, <laughs> reconsider. Joni, Joni's making the motion. Okay. Joanne, Joni's making the motion. Okay. I'll second. Wait a minute. Motion to reconsider. Which line? Um, that's the, well, it's the. Well, we have to. It's, it's part three. of line three. Yeah, it's one line of the components three. of line three. Okay. And Kevin, I mean, Jim, you're seconding? Yes. Okay. And this is just for reconsideration, right? Right. This right. is just reconsideration. Okay. Any discussion on the reconsideration? All in favor? That's 6 0. And now we can make a motion for a new number. Which I have is 27741. Well, right, but you the have total to do it as part of line three, though. Oops. The total number is 216,186. No, that's what no, it that's is what now. Originally. Sorry. <laughs> I need to add 241 to that. Like 420. 216,426. 216,426. That was hard coded in here. Oh. Okay, so you're making the are you making that motion for? Oh, uh, okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. I'll I'll make the motion to accept the revised number for line three of two hundred sixteen thousand four twenty six. I'll second. Jim, second discussion. All in favor? Are you voting for? I'm abstaining oh, because okay. I'm looking for my rationale of why I would have voted against it in the first. Well, that I didn't write down. Uh, opposed, uh, abstaining. So, so abstain. So five zero one with Kevin. Abstain. Kevin, does it sound familiar that you may have been asked waiting for an answer to a question about the, the bonus pool? I may have been. So I have a note that says you you um, not in agreement pending answers from Barbara. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I think it may have been on, on the bonus. Tuesday. And so let's see what happened Tuesday. Was Barbara, oh, I wasn't, was I absent? But Barbara recently sent you a bunch of answers to questions, didn't she, Kathy? Was it in there? <laughs> so that would have been April I, 2nd. I think it was before <laughs> that. Mm. Well, we voted. We much can matter, we voted, so it's yeah, done. Yeah, it's All right. Let's go through these line so items five, to see what we one, voted. and zero. We we'll let Kevin wonder about that and drive himself crazy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't write down the reason. I only wrote down that you did not vote for it. Let's see. Okay. Do, would you like to go up to, um, so, so now since we've done that. Yes. Do you, do you want to go through each one? Because mm -hmm. I made the updates to the file as well, and I'm going to send it to Barbara. Well, I'm going to see what we haven't voted yet. Oh, sorry. I think there's a couple we Fine. haven't voted. Sorry, Kathy. And the first one actually is uh, economic development, which. So page one is done? Is oh, yeah. I'm already way ahead of you. Yeah. Page two is done. And then the second page, starting with the town accountant, is That's done. One, two. Town, the next one, town council. I have that all done. Next one, conservation planners, ZBA is done. That's done. And then the next page, I just, the only one I don't have done is uh, the economic development. Yeah. That's me. We were going to have Kevin come, Kevin yeah. Filchek come when, with the STA, and it's, I mean, really it's just splitting off his salary, which was being paid entirely by the STA, because they thought it was a little more kosher, so to speak, to, because half his time is economic development. And then his supplies are, that, the only thing I don't know whether the supplies were in the STA budget or not. I can ask them. That I don't know. They're fairly minimal. Well, yeah, they're 1600 altogether of expenses. So, Joni, just technically, just remember that needs a line item now, too. Would, sorry. The, the, oh, the yes. Personal costs there for economic development doesn't have a line item associated. Actually, I wonder if the costs, the costs have been there all along. No, no, personnel. I costs. know, the co personnel weren't. but. I'm saying that the costs have been 1600 all along. They were already included. 
in this budget. No, are you talking right. about the expenses? Are you talking yes, the 47, okay. 48, 49. I'm not talking about the expenses. I was talking right, yeah, I know you're talking about that new, which will need a new line item, but I was okay. asking, I mentioned where those expenses were before, but there are or the supplies, but they have been here all. Yeah, since I, we created that position, they were in here. Right. Just note there's a spelling error there. A spelling error? Yeah, it's pers they have personnel with an A. Ah, uh, I see. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, my. Good eyes. Well, I'm I will uh, they're, change They're really it. old eyes. I've I will change it right now. Many times. Um, when I send this file to Barbara, she's going to renumber everything. Right, I figured. Oh, okay. Yeah, but, but thanks, Kevin. So I don't know if you're ready to vote on it, because it really is about 50% so of what she as has our STA funds, you know, not having the warrants, we, we can't, can't see the numbers. Has, has those numbers decreased? I, I mean, I think what they they probably increased for advertisement and everything else they do. No, but I mean the the the, the, the total? total bottom line number. What, what's I mean? I know you. Right I one. think I heard you explain that they're thinking mm -hmm. that. How, how is this position so. not related? I mean, the SDA is here for economic development. So why moving the funds out of here for this position into the general budget? Why why add it to the tax bill when it, it can be fully funded out of SDA funds? I guess I'm, I'm not understanding that rationale. Fully. Well, I think that he's actually, under the economic development, he's doing things besides the STA type of stuff. I think it's not always directly related. I'm looking for the... Well, that's an interesting question because have they been using up the full um, uh, amount each year, STA? We would, so we didn't get the accountant report this week, Kathy. Oh, yeah, we didn't. Um, but that'll be, that's in there, correct? It should be, but you have last week, so you should be able to see. No, I don't think we got one last week either. I think we've only gotten it once, actually. Uh, uh, no, we've gotten it twice. Oh, have we? We did? Are you sure? Because I don't remember that. Quite a while ago, and then we got another one within the past two weeks, or three weeks at least. I may have hmm. it here. Got a million folders. Yeah, we don't have the ST yet. And, and by the way, when I spoke to Barbara, um, the Board of Selectmen are meeting Thursday to go over the warrant. Did she tell you that already, too? It's coming Thursday? So we should have one Thursday night. Yes. Well, we wouldn't have one Thursday night if there's still. Most of it's done, yeah. Yeah, they met last week on it, too, didn't they? Yeah, there's only a couple warrant articles related to the senior center. Right. That need to be finished. So are they going to clash with our meeting on Thursday night? They have a, we have a meeting on the end oh. on Thursday. So will we have the warrant by then? Because I hope so. otherwise, hoping to, right? <laughs> I'm not sure we have anything question. to do. <laughs> well, not only that, but I mean, I, well, can we get it like tonight in a rough form so we could start? I, I like to read it really in depth and analyze the hell out of it. And so even in a rough form, I can at least start that. So do you want me to ask Kevin these questions before we vote on economic development? Makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I am curious as to why we're paying half his salary through taxpayer dollars and not the STA. I don't think I have a complete understanding of that. Okay. I don't know if they thought that the economic development was more separate from I, I, I want to see stuff? how they're, you know, how they're dividing it up. Then, what is he doing that isn't? Plus, tomorrow? they're getting one hundred eighty-three thousand, right? This year. Well, that's the betterment half, so that yeah. should be the equivalent on the other yeah. side too. Yeah. 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 Good question. All right. Well, then we'll. Then I think the. Like I, I, mean, no, I want to make sure. I'm, I, I, I'm not for against this right uh -oh. now. I just want more information. Yeah. Wait a minute. Was there something in the front about it? <coughs> hold on, hold on. Sometimes it's right before our very eyes and we miss it. Well, it's there, but it says no, I mean, split between the STA budget. 
Oh, our oh. split equally beginning in FY20 between what, what was the town the, uh, and STA. I mean, that, that's kind of just really, really general. Right. Doesn't really say why. Right. They have the categories for us each year. They yeah. they they've redefined them. Is it, it's right. In the is front. Brian still? Oh, here it says. No, in the, in the, uh, it says the split more accurately reflects the time spent for this position. If you see under budget uh, under the red, the red tab, tab yeah. budget overview, it does say it splits it between the town and STA budgets because they were. It more accurately reflects the time spent for this. So position. we don't know, Kevin, that some. So he might still have, or the position might still have funding out of STA. And this could be an addition. <laughs> oh no, no, no! It's supposed to be split. It says split, split I, I, uh, equally. Well, doesn't okay. say equally. Well, it doesn't say equally, so, but I think that's so what she had said. What, what changed in what he does in the years prior to this was 100 percent funded by STA. Right. To all of a sudden, now it's 50-50. What is the 50 percent he's doing that, you know, that I don't know was different than the, that same work he was doing last year and the year before? That might be a question that he best can answer. Maybe we should wait till he's here. I think well, so. Well, I think I, Karen I think can Karen, call. Karen can get the answer for you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm sure there's a there's a rationale, and I just don't have it. In that. I mean, I saw that paragraph, but that paragraph doesn't tell me anything. Right. And I don't know how he can spend 100% of his time on tourism, quite honestly. Well, so he, he doesn't technically, I mean, technically I it's not a full-time position because he works the emergency management as but well. But no, it was always supposed to be. It was always supposed to be part-time. Right. It's supposed to be partly economic development and partly STA, right. too. But, but I mean, it's how not it's a 40-hour really hour hour week. No, it's position. not a 40-hour oh. position. No. Okay. All right. We've done the rest of that page. Yes. Yes. I believe we've done the next you, one. The one meeting I missed, you guys covered. We blew like, through it. But I, yeah. As we're going through this, I, I did miss a meeting. So, if, for instance, I don't have the senior center building. Oh, we did that. Okay. When, and what was the vote? 6-1. 6-1. Okay. It was on 4-9. Thank you. And we did the whole west of that page as well. And did we do the safety complex? That yes. was with the fire oh, chief? Oh, that was the same day. 7-0 was the vote. Four nine seven zero. So um, the one thing we might want to explain to Jim since he missed that meeting is the supplies moved from Aprook Field Road to nursery school. Just yes. So he's aware of that. I knew there was a, a oh, conversation okay. about that, but I didn't know what happened. Yes. So we uh, reconsidered the nursery school to put the supplies in. And we took them out of April Field Road. And we voted for April Field Road. And we took the supplies out. The 350 went to yes. the nursery school. And what was yes. the, what day was that? That had before four nine. Two. Four nine. No, I have four two. I have the That's when we voted the original, I believe. I have the nursery school uh. on four two. So on four nine we made the change. Right, we reconsidered. Yes. Yeah. The three fifty went up here. And the vote on four nine was what was the vote that day? Yeah. Oh. Okay. 7-0. Oh, that's right. We Thank did you. Vote. Okay, that's why I didn't. <laughs> Thank you. I wasn't losing my head. <laughs> Whoa. So on 4-9, we voted because to we reconsider Because we were wondering what the supplies the were. Right. Okay. Did I, who had that? Was that Jared, or who was that? Oh, I know. I think he wrote to Robert right, in 2006. What? Because they have to be for... Repairs and maintenance. Right. So. Because I have a note here, may change. So we did not vote. Okay, then my notes are right here. Okay. Yeah, so. it's pending Jared, but he has yet to he, be able to connect with Barbara. Right. He did send me a copy of the email he sent her. Yeah. So okay. we did reconsider Ooh. it. That's right. We reconsidered so we it. Voted that, to reconsider. We did. Right. That's but the nursery did, school. But we didn't vote the new number. So we reconsidered in the vote from the reconsideration. So here, was my number. Yeah, 403. 403. LMJB and KS 403. So now we're going to vote on the new total, which is 2350. Well, we we don't yet. We're not yet because we don't know what the supplies are. Oh, okay. and Jared is connecting with Barbara. And so we can't vote on, on Brookfield Road then either. No. Okay. Thank you. Oh, okay. Glad we went through that. I could have missed that actually. Uh, police department. We voted fire. What was the vote on the fire department? Seven zero. 
seven zero. Oh, on the police, you mean? No, I got the. I was here for the police. Oh, four nine seven zero. That was four nine. Yeah. We did building inspector. Yep. The next page, we did the sealer weights and me measures. Yeah. I think we did everything. We did everything on that page. Yep. Next page, we've done the DPW town road maintenance. Everything. All of it. Yes. Did we do landfill? Yes, we did. On 411. What number is landfill? It was on 411. Yeah. What number? Uh, 898. I got 200. it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was here. Yeah, yeah you were here. And the uh, uh, Board of Health. We've now done the whole Board of Health of that new salary. I'm missing Council and Aging. That was 4 9 as well. Yes. And the vote that day. Hmm. Sorry. You gotta not write that one down. You have to finish Jim, didn't you read them? Yeah, Jim. Yeah, I read them, but I didn't connect them to this. Ooh, Smith. And I did, wa and I did watch the meeting <laughs> on TV, as a matter of fact. It's happening nothing. But I didn't take notes. Let's see. Yes, it was uh, seven zero. Yeah, because I heard the comments about not doing the minutes and why. Because you weren't here. <laughs> Uh, we've done veteran service. We have not done the library. Mm. That's the one because of the extra, the request the for the proposal. extra, the proposal for now 10 hours a week. So I would ask the town administrator. Oh, he did. Can we vote on that now? Or? Oh, we can vote on it, yes. Yeah, he the recommendation. Yeah, he recommended against it, remember? I thought I recommended that. So, are we going to vote? Yes, Larry's. Yes. Are you, are you, I'm 4 2. Are you holding, holding him to it? So, what was the town administrator's recommendation? I know, right? On that? I'm in the not middle. Not to uh, fund the new position, or not to add it. So, Larry, I believe that's your department? Yes. Would you like to make a motion? Yes, I move uh, the Finance Committee recommended the annual town meeting for line, well, hmm. we're really looking at I don't think we didn't 289, 357, right? No, 119 no, we, to 123. Right? 119 that? to 123. We, hit, we didn't vote any of them. The whole, uh, every, we held off on all of it. Well, in that case, we just need a grand total then. Right, correct. Right. Okay. The sum of $501,671. Is there a second? I'll oh, second. Yep. Discussion? Um, oh. I, Nobody's I going to the back here office. just because I, have, I want to bring up my discussion about these, these funds being thrown into the buildings to cover their maintenance oh. when, you know, when we have a reserve fund transfer or a reserve fund transfer method of taking care of it. So Kevin, I, so I spoke to Barbara and um, I wrote down, she mentioned that. Oh yeah, that $4,000, but though that's not in here. It's not in here. No, it's, it's actually it's, in it's the not. senior center, but all the buildings sort of right. have something. Three of them, right? Center office building, senior and one other, right? If this is well, the operations. So this is operation building. budget. Oh yeah, true. It wouldn't be the building. You're correct. Right? So it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't affect this, but we'll get to that. We'll we can talk about that after this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Sorry, Larry. You already uh, confused that. So nobody wants to go to bat for the new position. Just make it clear. Nobody wants to go to bat for that new position proposed. No. That's what no. It appears. No. No. Okay. I'm just making that clear. Okay. All in favor? Six zero. Thank you. I use the 16. Okay. And I believe we've done all of the next page, trails, historical, yeah. that service, and then the <coughs> unclassified so in you, central. We've done principal and interest. Just, just that one question, one more. So based on what Deb told us tonight about that money coming back because it was, you know, mm -hmm. debt service. Did, right. it, did it go into one of these two to lower that did it? payment? Do you know? I, I mean, at this point, it's moved. I'm just curious where it went. 
Because hmm. next year it's four hundred twenty-six thousand. It's, it's, it's quite a yeah, I don't know. Increase. I guess you'd have to ask Barbara. We're gonna have to ask Barbara. Add it to Jared's list. Yeah, just. Uh, I remember the first year talking to her about it, and she didn't know how they were dealing with it. But that was, I believe, two years ago now. And I, and I think we looked at the revenue, and we, it wasn't in there. Right? Yeah, I didn't see it. That's why. I, look, I looked at it, too. All right. So, I write that down. That's just where my, my question, you know. All right, well, to get back to the maintenance expenses in some of the build town hall or town buildings. Yeah. Did you, you talk to her? I did speak to her. And um, we do unclassified and it's yes. nursing already. Oh, OK. Would you rather? What? Thank you. Now I know I'm done. Yeah. So, um, the, so the maintenance money that was put into the accounts, and she spoke to you about this as well, Kathy, so I think this is just reiterating and maybe or make, making it clear, I don't know. But um, this is not for the upkeep. Right, so it's not it's not for any unforeseen cost. So if you know air conditioning breaks down or something like that, that's something that will come to the finance committee. Right, these are money set aside for su stuff such as you know looking here where Larry sits mm -hmm. because he's kind of messy. He's got he's chipping the paint over here. <laughs> it would be for something like that. <laughs> Just don't eat the paint chips. So it would be for some little thing, something, something small like that that they don't have to keep coming to the finance committee to approve. But for those costs, do so we, do we use, lose some of the, you know, being able to leverage that? Let's say, you know, I, I the, the example we're citing with like leaks. You know, when we were talking with this, the senior center director here, but any any maintenance item. So, you know, let's say the window was leaking and so, all right, I want to take care of window leak. I'm just going to have someone come in and cock seal it. How do we know that if they do that for $100 or whatever, how do we know that that wasn't caused by an ice dam or some other structural deficiency? And if it's an ice dam, how do we know, how does the department head then know that the ice dam isn't affecting five or six other town buildings mm -hmm. and that there isn't a town-wide approach being taken to handle these instead of handling you know, five different people to do it in five different buildings, we might be able to get a much lower cost by bringing in one person to do it all. How is this spending being controlled and what it's being put on? That's, that's the mechanism. So it's, it's not, first of all, the $4,000, she said, if, if, if we want to reduce it, fine, oh. but it's not something that's going to, did you want to say something? Yeah, but I don't see, right. see the way it was explained. I don't see where, the, where these departments need to come to you to, to spend this money. They already have it. But they, the, but they, they have, have to. The the right. Yeah, I think there has to be some faith in the people that we hire to manage these problems with the buildings. And I think the facility manager spent quite a bit of time before she left. Well, ba Barbara wasn't clear. Yeah, Barbara wasn't clear exactly what she had in mind before she left. But she does know that even if it if it were to pass, Jeff, you know, it has to pass Barbara as well, right? So she. So they are actually not allowed. This because this is the impression I got out of that meeting. They are not allowed to go out and hire someone to do any repair without getting approval first from the town manager and. Right. So staff. so when you mentioned like a. a like a window leak or something like that, Kevin, which might be a larger problem. It's not that. It's not. It's it's strictly like around your house, a leaky yeah, faucet, something that you know has to be a screen or I don't know something. Paint. Like little nicks here, right? Yeah, little nicks. It's not. How do you know if painting needs to be yeah, done here? Jeff painting just doesn't said need they to have to get a PO. Right. That's so what. Well, that's is. what wasn't explained the other night. Mm -hmm. That wasn't the impression that was left. There has to be some faith in the staff to mm -hmm. understand that there is a bigger picture than a piece of chip paint. Uh, right, right. But so the 4,000 in each of those, I think it was three or four buildings. I know it was this It was three one, buildings, COB, I thought she said. And Center senior. office, senior, and I, I think it's this. Is building, it this too. one? You know, she, she's not. It wasn't she's not wedded to specific. the four grand. Sorry, Kathy. I didn't mean. Yeah, no. Um, if 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 it's something that if you want to keep it smaller, mm -hmm. she's fine with that. Yeah, town hall has it too. But it's not. It's certainly not for someone to go and replace a whole window, 
or to hire their their brother to come in and put down new carpets. You know what I'm saying? It's but not that, for yeah, that. I mean, that's what I want to make sure is the mechanism is there. You know, as a taxpayer, right? You want to make sure you right. that the taxpayer dollars are being spent. You know, wisely. Well, that and and, and you know. I guess I look at your example with the, 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 the chips here. There are chips here. There will be chips at the senior center. There will be chips at five buildings. Why not hire one painter to take care of them all? And you could because there's no yes. sense of urgency to take care of paint chips. Yes, you could. a plumbing yeah. problem or an electrical problem that should be addressed within a matter of a day or so because you've got a leak and then you've got a, mm -hmm. a bucket under Then you might want to call Jeff and say, I need a plumber. Well, and he can, he can take care of getting the plumber right. here because that's a $50 or $75 an hour proposition. I think it really versus, matters. At the end of the day, they have to go through. They have to go Parker through the town administrator. Which is that's the key. Concern was. Was. Exactly. Yeah, that's we have so a gate. There is a check in place. There, yes. there is a check. You know, like like Barbara said, if if it does pass him, it has to kind of pass her as well. So. Well, no. In, 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 in Karen's right. My concern coming out of the discussion that I was definitely left with the impression that each person with this type of money in their thing was left to their discretion in how they spent it, and so that left that kind of wiggle in this as well is this especially what was it five six years ago we had ice dams on every freaking building and then you know we had to yeah. take care of it we took care of it town wide rather than letting each building be right we did yeah we did but if we go back to when we had a main a person in charge of this before she left i think that she may have had the discretion to do that Within the four thousand each building, without right. going to well, Jeff yeah, or to Barbara. Job, that's part of that. Oh no, I think they still. Gone. I so think now this PL still have to go the through. The gatekeeper has to be right. Jeff. It it still would, yeah, absolutely, yeah. it would yeah. still have to go through. Yeah. yeah. But you know, like before I got here today, Barbara said, you "Just walk in and and just be aware of some of the little nicks and and whatnot going through the town hall." Yeah, I agree with her. You know, it's like. Perhaps one of the well, there's glass light bulbs casings fall. Not really a light bulb because that's different, right? But like the glass casing, it's like 50 bucks tops to replace the glass. Are they going to come to the finance committee and ask for a free uh, transfer? No, it's for fine 50 as long bucks? as there's accountability to just say yeah. yes. I think there is. I, I think we expense. got it. I, think I was comfortable with that. Yeah. Yeah. I will speak for you. <laughs> Kevin is satisfied. <laughs> I, I mean, how many payroll that? I mean, how many people were in the finance committee the night we had a meeting here and the waterfall was coming down that lamp right there? I, I wasn't there. I well, that's know. what I mean. I mean, that could But be that's a, a larger problem. problem. Yes. And it's, and it's not meant to, to, I even wrote down, it's not meant to uh, pay for the larger pro so problems. No, no, that's fine. So. I, I, I think Karen spoke for me very well. <laughs> oh, that's I think she should do that for a living. <laughs> but no one does. Not. But you know what, Kevin? I didn't disagree with you. You know, you you brought up a valid point. So it's not like, you know, now it is. Do you guys want to keep it at four grand? Well, you know, now that we know what what where she's coming from, you know. Well, you know, this goes back to you know depends what people are concerned about. Some people would express at the beginning of the budget cycle a serious concern about the tax rate and the tax burden being put on people. Well, this is some place where I mean, it, it may not not amount to a lot of savings, but it amounts to some savings. I agree. I'm reducing it. Which is why, if if I, I'm just going to say it again, is four thousand dollars too much? Should it be three? Should it be two? If they're for small well, amounts, knowing that these guys are gonna, you know. Well, Eight Brookfield Road has the same account, twenty thousand, right? It's a thousand to do maintenance. But we're waiting. But we're waiting for confirmation on exactly what those are for, right? From Barbara. Did this this should go to another one of those like the my my charter bill question. Why are they different for different buildings? Mm -hmm. Maybe some are because they get higher use than others. But. But in this case, we're talking about a, a protocol and a chain of command. That's been and if there's going to be a whole lot of conversation going on for hours about it, you just paid for the repair twice because you're tying up the, t the time of all these people that are involved in the process. But, so, but, but we need to ensure the process is there. Sure we do. So we have a town administrator and a finance director and a, a, but again, and I a supervisor of the building. That meeting, that wasn't the impression that was left. Right. Okay. But that's the impression I have now based on yeah, what no, Jeff said. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. But I think Heather was, the person was unsure. I think yeah, I'm not blaming her or anything. No. I'm just, I think the facilities manager had requested those be put in there. Yeah, I think she wanted the, some of she did. discretion to be able to do these things in, in an expeditious way. Right. 
Can I ask one question related to that? Are we actively searching for a new facilities manager? Yeah, it's been advertised, I believe. Yeah, it's closed for meeting Thursday. Ah. Oh, okay. okay. Well, I think except for the. Well, the so the town meeting warrant articles would we'll get an official version Thursday or Friday, and then we can get an official version before that. I'll see what I can. Otherwise, if we don't have it by Thursday, there's almost no point in the meeting. Well, I, I ask because, you know, we're, if you look at when you have to publish the book and you work your dates back, there's not a hell of a lot more meetings for us to consider I know, a, I'm getting a, a little worried. item article warrant. Right. Well, we, we whacked out four articles this morning. So. Oh, there you yeah. go. So, yeah, but still, 50 is quite a bit. It's a lot. Of, some are pro forma. Yeah. They're real easy to say. Okay. Yeah, if we can get the easy ones, we can. Are there any zoning articles? Um, yeah. Those are the big ones. Those no, are the big there's, uh, one, there's one to change different. Cedar Street. Yeah. Because they, some of the adjacent property, Table 3's property, is zoned residential. So they, I, I don't remember the details, but they need some zoning need changes there. They parking area. Because is of parking. Is it just there that they're looking to change the zoning, or is it on all of Main Street? I think it's just I adjacent just to their his, property yeah. because there was a planning board meeting I watched. And table three people were there. I think Dan was his name is Ganya. They were there explaining the situation. And they were 100% behind it. They were just trying to be considerate of the neighbors who had residential properties. They were very considerate. Is, am I hitting the right thing, Jeff? Is that? Yeah, I accurate? think you're just extending the whatever it is there, commercial, yeah, the, the commercial tourists back a little there, bit. There's a uh, house. Yeah. yeah. To accommodate. Yeah, they Jean talks expand. about that when she came here. Yeah, they need to expand the parking. But I mean, I'm, but the things like bylaw changes usually involve mm -hmm. discussion. So you know, it's not just like a, oh, we you know, what is it? Article four is always the line item budget. That's usually nine to nothing. We're not even thinking about it. But usually, when the Jean proposes it and the planning board's already approved it, it's but that doesn't mean. I mean, I there have been plenty of zoning articles where there've been a lot of questions. About yeah. Bylaws. They're pretty thorough. Yeah, for the most part. Mm. But there's still been a lot of questions from us. <laughs> yes. All right, well. Okay. I don't know that there's anything else we can do tonight, is there? Well, do you, I really would like to make sure that we have all the dollars correctly on here. I mean, I know I do here, so do you mind just? No going through and then because I just want to confirm everybody's all right with everything that has been voted since this is the official document all right you can do that so if I go up to the very top actually I, I do have mm -hmm. like one more question related to that very first line item if the board of selectmen aren't recommending it either we we can just take it right out because it's brand new and if they're if they're not bringing it forward then there's no reason to even put it out there to discuss well, that stipend stuff but we don't yeah. know what they vote I, I don't know what they voted they on. they voted the line item budget no we're gonna work on that thursday uh oh okay so i guess we don't know we'll everything thursday huh wow it's a long meeting huh yeah one well, o'clock the there's only a couple of more issues to resolve that should be oh they're not going through all 57 yet. They've covered 90% of them. I took them back Thursday. I was there today. Oh, okay. The, the ones that they need to work with, the senior center of rec ones that we can resolve this morning with the parts. Okay. So, we, sorry. So it'll be a lot better up? after Jeff, Thursday than it was yeah. this morning, I can guarantee you. <laughs> Jeff, do you want to come up and talk in the microphone? Because I know it on the, you're no, fine to fine. stay there. If no, no. More questions, I will. Okay. Because I know people can't hear on the um, yes. TV. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, so that one is zero, right? So yeah. the so the um, total. Well, our vote is zero. Yes. Yeah, I'm only going through column G. Okay. It's fine. Fincom, right? Board of Selectmen total is twenty nine hundred. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, we made changes to the town administrator. So we have line, oh, never mind the lines. Merit-based pay incentive is now 27,741, which makes the total personnel cost 216,426, right. mm -hmm. which makes the total administrator, t total administrator total 
Town administrator total. Town administrator total. <laughs> 253,776. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, FinCom is 7189 for a total. Town accountant, no change, 96,847. Board of Assessors, 142,196. Finance director, no change, so that's 262,069. Town council is 100,000. IT, I don't have any change, so that's 184,781. Um, town clerk is 107,914. Mm -hmm. Elections and registration, 28,448. Can you just stop us right there for a second? And I, I'm, I apologize that I wasn't here for this okay. meeting. But how are we trending for town council expenses? I mean, it seems in 18 we were over by 25%. What are we doing this year? She said there was nothing major that was being worked on this year. I want to say, I, I thought I looked at the budget when we got it, or the, when Chris sent it to us. I don't, I don't think it was out of whack. I just, you know, because there were, there were you three, it, right? three union contracts out this year, so you thought they might have been involved in that. But that's, okay, good. Right, all the I think we, she had talked about that and said there was nothing unusual about yeah. this year. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I think one of their cases that had been going for, I don't know, years um oh i know linda told me that it i believe the judge ended up basically throwing it out it was a you have to somewhat a board of health conservation issue up on what off of allen road around there i don't there. remember where it was it's somewhere up in that area okay. and uh, i believe the judge tossed it after six years um, so Conservation Commission, no change, that's 88,322. Uh, town Planner, no change, 177,718. Wasn't there a longevity plus 300 in that one? Or did I have that in the wrong line? That's included. Oh, okay, you included that. Yep. Okay. Oh, so there's a new line? Yeah, so don't go by the lines, Kevin, because we have to renumber them, right? Well, you actually added one, though, longevity. For I did. So that's included in personnel costs. So so personnel costs is actually, Barbara fixed it. So it's 131,726. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's right. It was in the total. The line just wasn't there. Okay. 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 So they thought it's been fixed. Thanks for mentioning that because I didn't highlight that. Looks like it. Oh. Board of Appeals, uh, 590. No change there. Economic development, we didn't vote it, but it's currently at 20823 Can I just make a comment to Kevin's question? Mm -hmm. This is the last one we got from Kathy, and I think it's at least a few weeks old, and the balance left in town council expenses, the balance of money unexpended was 13283 So that means we spent $87,000 since so July. So you're 87% expended. How far through the year are you roughly? Ballpark. Three quarters? So, yeah, 75%. So you're a little ahead, but she may not foresee any other. There might not be anything else. So. Well, I'll see if we can get a, another one soon. She's probably watching. No, no she's, she's not feeling well. She hasn't been feeling that, flu, yeah. yeah. yeah oh. That's too bad. Um, right. So <laughs> facilities, no change, 104,171. Town Hall, no change, 48,215. Center Office Building, no change, 43,110. Before we go too far, well, Jeff is here, and you are looking at these, the, the, the new hmm. resumes of people applying for facilities mentioned. Do you expect it to fall in at 52,000, or will that need to be adjusted? Just, you know, because the, yeah. the other one, the other one was $12,000. Right, right. If that happens, the, or, or if, if uh, I guess before, if, it, if they manage to hire someone before we review this, we can always adjust it now. But mm -hmm. if after town meeting, I guess it would be a reserve fund transfer? 
if it well, well it could be it, it could, could be, be. A, a special town meeting article this it all depends on the okay time. because you'd have enough money in the salary line items to cover them for the first three or four months till you could have a special town meeting and sure and change it there what did the hours get changed to in that position they were never full-time I thought it was full-time now we pulled it to full-time yeah okay. after um, and Matt left, it went from okay. part time to full time. That salary is consistent with what Charlton has on their budget for the same fiscal year that we're going into. It's almost an identical number. For a full time? I, I'm assuming full time at that rate. Mm -hmm. I think. But I don't know that for a fact. Um, so moving on to senior center building total, no change at 27649 The Joshua Hyde library building total is 25,314 safety complex 93,460 okay nursery school well we haven't done it yet that's right do you want me to tell you what it's proposed or no leave it yeah well it's 2000 so, so we added the 350 but well, it would be 2350 yeah, 2350 yeah. um and 8 brookfield road would be 1300 so for the police department the personnel costs and the overtime change. So the overtime was reduced to 436016, mm -hmm. bringing the total to 2742184, mm -hmm. bringing his total line item to 3042975. Right. Fire department, no change at 1574009. Building inspector, no change at 125729. Sealer of weights and measures, 5350. Um, inspectors total is 58,465. Tree warden is 20,710. Education we just did, which is 18 million nine hundred and seventy five thousand seven hundred and sixty six can we just stop for one second tree warden so who as part of your topics for discussion you know we were talking about how to how to add detail to the supposed study that's being done on the wages and all that mm -hmm. this particular item's been a stipend for 40 years is this an item that they want to consider turning into some type of actual position with its own rate in the whole bit. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that might be one part of the parameter of the discussion of that article when they set up the, mm -hmm. the matrix to maybe include a tree warden position. I have because to. Because at some point, the stipend is just not going to fly anymore. On its face, this this seems hardly adequate for the amount of time that Tom puts in. From what I suppose. Oh, no. We, I, I don't think so, anyone would argue against that. But right. It's, so. Um, I, I'm just saying, you know, we were talking about adding. You won't get anybody to do this job the way he does it for, for what it costs us to have him do it. No, I, I'm 100% agreement with that. I think I, the article, though, is just just to fund a study. Well, yeah, but we should add very specific things we oh. want to get out of that study. Sure. You know, manpower. You know, are we adequate? Are we under? Are we over? Are we? You know, what? You know, the actual matrix itself. What the spectrum should be, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Right, include, include, include this position. As a position rather than a stipend. A pros prospective position, not yes. that we're going to do anything, but if it's going to happen or it would happen, we have an idea we'd be prepared is. already as part of the study. Jeff, you have? <laughs> we talk about the classification study? Yes. 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 That's really only looking at non-union positions. Non right. Non and this would be building. one. Right. Tree warden would be one. When you talk about understaffed overstaffed right. bodies just want to be clear it's just non-union right i'm not talking pd oh, we're not okay. talking fire oh those kind of well things. you would be department the, the, the department heads here though right the chiefs the lieutenants yes the people that are not, okay. but we're not talking right do we have enough police officers do we have firefighters so they, they're not going to be doing that type of analysis this, this was really to look at because the unions have their own right scales and their own ways of doing things this was more about reconciling the non-union processes and classifications mm -hmm. create some equity the or just to make sure we're doing things that were competitive that are yeah we're competitive in the general 
Yeah. And I think it'll also help in the grading and all that of the personnel right. committee as well. So it's Absolutely. kind of an aid for the you know, personnel committee. Oh, okay. Yeah, Yeah, because we talked about this two years ago. I mean, before Leon created this matrix that we're suddenly dealing with, we talked about how in, in, in the civilian world, how you had scales and so forth. We had minimums and maximums and means and medians, and you didn't have this structured scale that everyone moved at one year. They moved up the ladder like that. That's not the way. But that's the way. That's the way municipalities are. Right, and that, because that's the way the bargaining, collective bargaining groups are, so you have to have mm -hmm. a level playing field, I understand. So that's where, why he went that way. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I, again, it is, I guess we wanted to add some more specificity. Exactly. And, and you're at looking to add a position. We might as well throw this in there now and not have to go out and do another study to find out what tree wardens get when they're full time employees. And I don't know if this will ever be is that position. Thing? Is it full time tree there, warden? Depends. In a small I town? think it depends. Well, in a small town, that would be tough. But in some I mean, yeah, I'm sure there are in cities. So. But I bet New York City has one just for Central Park. Mm -hmm. We have a half a dozen for Central Park. Well, we're not. We're talking. <laughs> I know what you're talking What? Weathersfield has a full time tree warden. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they tree do? Crew. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But, but I mean, it's not unrealistic to expect if and when Tom decides not to do the responsibility anymore right. that we will have to go out and find something to do it. And that, or Jim points out, $2,700 a year is probably well below minimum wage. <laughs> For the hours he puts in? Yeah, I would think so. Mm -hmm. So, well, but you know that that also begs <laughs> begs the question. You know, you've got this stipend position. Maybe the stipend position should be looked at kind of jointly. You've got the veterans, and isn't the um, animal? No, the office? veteran's not a stipend anymore. He got changed. He's I think salary. he is. No, he's not. No, that's still a stipend. He's still stipend. Yeah. Just got increased. It was increased. It's still a stipend. Is it? And I, I thought he'd get like forty thousand dollars. No, he gets. No. I think more oh, no. increased it. No. I think no. ten. He gets so you've 95, got, you've got he's going up to 95.32. And isn't the dog officer a stipend as well? I know, he's the animal patrol officer. I think he's in the he, police department. He's, I think he's she, all of them. It's a she. It's a she. she. So it falls under the police, but I, th I thought it was a stipend. But I could be wrong. But, but there's well, three know. potential like stipend positions. Oh. You know, maybe, maybe it's something you know, no, for another day. No, it's something you should consider. Yeah. They can be. Yeah. Well, emergency management is stipend, according to this. Is, I don't think he's stipend. That's what it says. I well, think yeah, yeah, I think management. he gets a bonus based on that. It says 6000 well, You're trying to accumulate this into one person? Sorry. Is that what you're thinking? You're, you're talking about um, the emergency management for the chief. That's mm -hmm. not oh, that's the same right. as oh, the Kevin emergency Filchak. management person. Correct. Yes. yes. Yeah. I just was looking through the. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. That's incorporated into his contract. Right. Yeah. Um, Sorry. I Digressed on us. No, that's all right. Um, so, Department of Public Works total, no change, one million forty-six thousand five thirty-eight. Town road maintenance is six thousand. Snow and ice removal is uh, two hundred eighteen thousand seven nineteen. Landfill we reduced. So, for the purchase of service, that number is now one fifty-six one sixty. Yep. Which brings the total expenses to 165,430, and the total for landfill is 278,855. Um, Board of Health, we just said, so that's 72,000 for the salary. Um, personnel cost is 97,807, and the total Board of Health is 109,218. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Community health is 4,000. Inspections and testing is 46,091. Council on Aging is 144,351. Veteran service is 65,457. Joshua Hyde operations that we just voted on is 501,671. Recreation is 92,221. Trails Committee is 400. Historical Commission is 1,200. Debt Service Principal is 1,093,000. Debt Service Interest is 411,842. Unclassified, we included the OPEB study of 7,500. 
which brings the total expenses to four million eighty six thousand eight thirty five. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Central purchasing is three thirty eight nine hundred. Mm -hmm. And the total that I have right now is thirty-four million sixty-seven thousand four hundred and forty-four. Can you say that again? Thirty-four million. Yep. Thirty-four zero six seven four four four. Okay. Two questions coming in. One: How close does that put us now to our levy limit, where we were, you know, eighty something thousand dollars away, and we've added in twelve thousand here and a couple thousand there and a couple thousand someplace else? Well, it looks like it's only about seven thousand more. Um, where would that be at the bottom, Kevin? Is it? Well, I mean, well, we it was 30. Now. We have 4,600. Yeah, it was 34,060. Now it's 34,067. Yeah, so we took some out. So all right, we did so take we some from out from the. It looks like just around 7,000 that's it's up. And then the only other thing is, you know, usually we get a document about debt service principal and debt service interest. Mm -hmm. How much longer is Burgess Elementary and Brown Hall on the agenda for? Oh, Burgess is. Still quite a while. Yeah. Wait a minute, I thought that was in here somewhere. It should be on the yellow book, but I forgot to take the yellow book. It's usually an appendix in the back of it. Yeah, it is. I have the yellow book with me. You mean from last year's yellow yeah, book? Yeah, that's why I call it the yellow book, because every year it changes color. Next year it'll be pink or whatever color we go with. No, 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 no. That's, that's completely in my right? Yes, it is. It's completely <laughs> yours. It is. I, I mean, I'll, I'm just saying next year it'll be referred to by a different color. Well, yeah. Let's see. Outstanding debt. Burgess Elementary. Well, there seems to be two of them. One is 2000 or 2030, and one's 2031. Actually, there's three. There's three. There's three different tranches right. of borrowing. 2030, 2030, and 2031. Town Hall is 2029. I think that was going to be sooner. That's what I was interested in. Yeah. For the debt exclusion. But task was done, right? Yeah, well, well we're, we're getting no, money. It's not officially, but we're getting money back. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. There's an asterisk here, refunded. Where is that coming from? How much do you Oh, no, that's, it's big, it's the um, sewer project. Okay. Yeah, so it's still quite a ways. Okay, I'm just hoping some of those are going off the books. Because it sounds like we're, we may yeah, be considered adding some. I thought the town hall was sooner, but I guess not. No. Mm. And then we have the CPA ones, but those are so outside the tax rate, so to speak. I'm going to ask you an unfair question. I know it's unfair <laughs> because you probably haven't seen it yet in either, either. But with the warrant, and do you foresee us having to bring in people to discuss articles? And how are we going to line, that, line this up? So I do foresee people? some of them, yes, certainly, yes. But since I haven't seen the warrant, I don't know who that might be. Though we usually have like STA come in. Yeah, well, yeah, but I'm just thinking like it's April well, it's, it's 16th, 16th or whatever, and yes. you've got like a month. And so we have really? eight, we have what, eight meetings? Six really that are effective? Long meetings. Oh my. <laughs> You're well, right. My yeah, my. Well, that's why when, whenever I see these warrants going longer and longer, I get really concerned. Yeah, me too. When, what is our drop dead uh, date? That's we well, can work backwards. June, I mean, I, I it's June last, 3rd. Right, two weeks before that is technically you'd like to have the work in the, in the taxpayers' hands. So, well, so two weeks before the yeah, before so, June 3rd. Yeah, so what's that? Sometime mid May. Mm -hmm. So now you need a week for the printer to work on it, unless just some, you know, roughly. So you're early May. It's getting tight. Yeah. A few years ago, did we not start meeting three times a week? Yeah. I think we did, didn't we? Tuesday, we, Wednesday, well, Thursday. There was one year I know we had a Saturday meeting before the war. But so, that, that, was, that was very rare. I mean, that was one time of the 20 years that was there. Wow. Now, that's why I'm just asking, you know, when we get this in our hand, maybe we can discuss how we're going to lay this out yes. so we can march through it. So, like, May 20th is when is, is the drop dead date? Well, that's when it's thing. usually in the hands of yeah. a printer. You'll be able to get through this one night. Just bang right out. You've never been before us. Then. <laughs> You're really optimistic, Jeff. 
There's nothing super controversial this year, though. Yeah, there oh, there's are. some fields, right? Well, fields in senior center. How did that shape out? Wasn't there a meeting today? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. We it'll shape it to, up a little better by Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. It's been narrowed to three warrant articles. Two are pretty straightforward. The third, the joint one, will take some explanation, but it's much clearer than it was. Hmm. You couldn't help but be much clearer than it was. <laughs> it was pretty confusing. But right. it's much better now that somebody organized it. Uh. So once again, we'll be scrambling, Kathy, on a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon at one of our houses know. or a town hall, getting our uh, PDFs together. We need Jared this year. Thank you. Or Kevin. Or oh. Kevin. <laughs> oh, Jared. I'm a new guy. I know nothing. <laughs> Jared was much quicker, I have to say. Hey, you don't know. Last year we sent it to Germany, where Jared was, to fix something in the PDF. Right, because the PDF after we got the PDFs, we had to make a change, and I can't edit a PDF. <laughs> and Jared was in Germany, and he Just did when it. When you thought you were out, they pull you back in. <laughs> Poor Jared. With so that, so sorry. That also means we should all be thinking about our essays. Yes, we already have some <laughs> topics to consider here. Let's see, parking on the common, uh, additional dispatch people, employees. It is uh, dispatch week or something. Telecommuter, telecommunicators week. Thank you. But I know they've been highlighting the mm -hmm. dispatchers. Um, the compensation study. Um, was that, what, what, what's specifically on that? We've had that a, a while. That's like an ongoing one, right? Well, the one that's about to come up, I believe. Oh. Yeah, it's the one that Jeff was talking about. We were talking about adding very specifics to it oh, and the, making sure we got something that was really usable for the long term out of it. And I also have written down additional time for rec. That's all I have written down at the moment. Well, stipend. Additional time for the rec director, or? Well, the stipend would be part of That's that. That's what it was for the rec was. director. For the rec director. Maybe part of that study thing about the compensation to make sure well, right. we work long term to include these as actually salary positions versus just stipend. Right. Because it is foreseeable that those will change you know, within the next decade. Well, considering that Tom has already retired from his real job. I was being generous. Mm -hmm. I mean, it might be even shorter than that. <laughs> I don't know. I thought we had more than that, Kathy. To be honest. Well, that's four. We don't have to think about it. Yeah, yeah. If anyone wants to volunteer for any of them now? We don't all take one. We don't want the book to be 150 pages. <laughs> Didn't we put five extra hours into the budget for the rec? We did, but she was looking for full time. She was going for another five. So is it her intent to substitute motion that figure? No. So what would we need we, to be we writing um, a summary about yeah. for that I, one? I guess just, I don't know, I, I wrote it down. It would have to be someone who thinks, you know, we would have to think that was a good idea that she gets those five additional hours. And probably in another position. year, not, not well, this year. Yeah, but I mean, that's the if there's reason. money, the issues for your consideration would be something that I mean, if there's only one person in this committee that thinks it might be something worth pursuing, and there's eight people that don't, then it really isn't an issue for anyone's consideration. Right, that's true. We're going to shoot it down anyways. Right. Well, it doesn't something mean the like meeting will, but right. you know, won't we'll get. Well, well, but so a justification with that would have to, as part of that essay, would have to be to without getting too complex for the, for the reader. To uh, demonstrate the enormous amount of time as this thing expands that it's consuming. But, her but I guess, Jim, my point is, it's very hard for someone to write in favor of something they don't. They don't. No, I understand yeah. that. Oh yeah, that's true. Well, that may be one that we could well, snatch out. Well, I think if then. the five hours are already in there, next year she comes back and asks for five more. We'll have a year to look back on and say, what did you do with the five hours, and what kind of results, and what that. Do you know what I mean? But what that also leads to is if we keep expanding the recreation uh, scope into more and more activities, 
year round, it's not just going to be a matter of adding hours to her. It's mm -hmm. going to be a matter of adding staff because there's only one of her and you can't cut her up. So we're going to all of a sudden she's going to have two people working for her, three people to schedule all these links that are playing in all these locations, indoors and outdoors, 12 months out of the year. So this could get very complex very quickly. Mm -hmm. That's what the librarian said. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Maybe you need a, a scheduler person for my only thing, things. my only concern with, or objection to the library um, proposal was there was no thought put into a nominal charge that I think the public would be willing to pay to offset paying for that those additional hours of that person. I talked to the librarian at length on that very point. I think I can accurately represent her view now. The library is a whole entity. It doesn't sometimes charge, I'm not talking about late fees at all. Uh, it doesn't sometimes charge and sometimes not for minutes. its entire panorama of offerings. It doesn't say, well, you can check out two books now, but the third one, if you want to take it now, that's going to be 50 cents. It doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is free in the sense that any given user has full access to the entire collections at any time. Of course, that's a specialized definition of free. Some libraries in America actually have free as their middle name. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea of starting to earmark, uh, say, in some of the programs is to suggest that part of the collections is added on by analogy is only the palm the hand and the fingers are all added on you, you want to use your thumb that's going to cost extra mm -hmm. especially because it's opposable no they don't think that way at all so it's the philosophy of well it's as I understand it from her it is the philosophy in the United States in public libraries. But yet you, I think you're talking specific to library programs, right? What if it's a third party that wants to just use their room to do, you know, what if it's someone who's an estate planner or wants to bring in a bunch of people and just present to them, you know, what services they can do for them? They can rent the space. Hmm. So they would rent it, they would have a feedback. That's conceptually different. No, it is, I agree with you, but I just wanted to make sure you know, there's a difference between a program run by the library and not charging any fees to do it right. versus an outside party coming in just using the facility. That's right. Could they, do, could they get a fee from that to maybe offset some of that woman coordinating who's using the room, when in for how many people? Well, then you make a commitment for an expenditure and a question mark for the source of revenue to cover it. No, I'm not yet. No, I... What if nobody shows up to pay rent? You've already decided you're going to spend. No, I, do. I just the things to think about. Well, Other things to think this about is what too. She said. It's from a staffing standpoint. It's like, and we had this conversation about scheduling the fields and all of this, this. This capacity planning, and I take that into looking at people's job functions and what they do, and what are they doing that they shouldn't be doing, and what are they not doing that they should be doing. And what is reasonable to expect someone to accomplish day by day, week by week, as part of their regular job? Are they operating 100% efficiency? Are they operating at 80%? And that can be part of an evaluation, but it won't be part of a study like this. It'll be part of the town administrator's study as he evaluates the individuals in each management position in the town. And he says, you do need 10 more hours. And he, or you don't need 10 more hours because you have enough people there if they were, if they were managed correctly to handle all this stuff. In the, in the given workday. And I'm not saying that's the case in any one of these instances or not the case. But I think that has to be evaluated before you start adding people and hours because once you add it, you own it. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes you're better off to work overtime with people and pay them time and a half until you sort out that because you don't pay benefits on overtime. So you, you, the net cost is, is pretty much, and you can always eliminate overtime. That's all I'm getting at. Just be careful where we go because once you're there, the stake is in the ground, and you're set. 
I, the only caveat I'd add to that, I agree with everything you said, is that even if the money did get approved to add a position, it is the town administrator's prerogative, and he can choose not to spend the money and not absolutely, the and then just come back to us the next year. Yeah, and that's true. He gets paid to make that decision. Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. Big shoulders. <laughs> one uh, one item uh, that I've been kind of toying with, Kathy, because I've been somewhat uh, more vocal on is the um, the budget town budget forecast you know f as a subject to discuss in what sense five yeah hmm. yeah five year yeah I've been toying with that I think it's something that should be more uh, um, publicly explained I guess I think it would be beneficial let's just say um, just in talking with people about it and about funding of the town and, and I say you know what guys we don't have any money Guys, money doesn't grow money. on trees. Yeah, unless you want to have that pot shop come on, come in, bring in some tax. I revenue. think that's on the warrant. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, well, uh, or the tax is that. on the warrant. But but it it's way, a point, right? you know, where the revenues come. Well, there aren't very many, you know, mm -hmm. and I think that's a, a concern that people. So when they want to spend two million dollars on uh, windows or, or whatever, I'm just saying whatever they might want to think about that because I don't think and to your point a few years ago when we had all those big ticket items fields and properties and this and that um, public safety replacement senior center replacement I mean how long you know all that stuff it like I think it was like 12 million dollars like what you know oh, I think it was more than that yeah. it was a yeah. big, <laughs> big big amount of money Stuff like that can I think know, what's it was to way stop more it? than twelve million dollars. And they mentioned that project at Tantasqua Junior High School, and that's going to involve windows and doors that have been there since the seventies, which tells me if that they're going to run it unless they've foreseen these difficulties. Who's ever removing those windows? There's going to have to be all types of uh, protective action taken because most of the caulking and other materials used to install those windows contains asbestos. Oh. And that's been a problem in all kinds of schools. It's a problem in all in schools. We're changing the name from finance committee to operations. Okay, <laughs> but I'm, I know I'm sorry. I'm just saying that's a, there's a dollar amount attached to that, and that two million very quickly become. I, I thought it was asbestos was out the door by before, before seventy five. Hmm. They discovered it in maybe seventy two or seventy three. The regs came down, so I'm not right. sure. Well, anyway, well, I don't be. know. But I just throw that out. What's next? Right. Well, anyway, that's a topic I just. All right. To add, if you want, I don't know if anyone else has any thoughts. I'm I'm playing with that one. Perhaps. Okay. All right. We have. Uh, well, we don't have the any articles, so we have no reserve fund transfers, but we have minutes. Okay. We like to keep up. Ninth and eleventh, we have. Oh, I I, I I read them, but I only had one question on the minutes in general. I want to find an example of one. That's just from Tuesday, because I wasn't here. Um, and, and maybe it's to wait, uh, you know, uh, so like on here on the fire, right, discuss centered about on whether this amount is regularly scheduled events in the town. True, very true statement. But there were, like, the finding that came out of that is, yes, in fact, it is used to supplement the thing because, we, you know, we have these funds there in place for events we know the town's coming for. I mean, I don't know how much detail you want to get to. And that's what was discussed, but there was, there was no, there's no detail around what we, what we discover out of that. That, that these betterment funds are, you know, special events over time, are really supplements to the budget. To, you know, and understandably so, but they're supplements to the budget. We, we can certainly more. add that into it. If, I mean, it was discussed. Well, I, up, would you like to have that well, added? I, I'm asking just simply, sure. give me what's been the, you know, the way minutes have been done in the last few years. If it's just keep to the general topic like that, that's the way it is. I'm, I'm you know, still kind of considered the new guy when it comes to how the minutes have been done. <laughs> They haven't really changed too much. I think they're pretty detailed. I'm happy to, you know, I, I, I happen to think that more detail is better, but, you know, I, you I also, I also that. know that I'm, I'm, uh, it's easy for me to say now that I don't have to take the minutes anymore and participate in the meetings. So right. <laughs> I actually love all of them. <laughs> but I don't think it's a big deal for us to include, right, Joanne, if we wanted to include a, that particular caveat into this particular set of minutes? For under the fire special events overtime? Yeah. 
Well, you know, the, that's just happen? one example. There's some things where, like, you know, when you see the bullet point that says fire, structural, firefighting, cancer prevention, hoods, mm. I mean, it just doesn't tell us what was actually discussed. I guess if you really wanted to, that topic was discussed, what was actually stated and talked about isn't really there. Well, we need a motion to amend. Yeah, I would absolutely, you know, if there's something in the minutes that you guys want and that you feel that it absolutely should be there, I agree with you. Make the amendment and we'll include it, Kevin. Right? Because we talked about this, what, a week ago or maybe a we week had a ago. You know, when everybody reads the minutes, and I hope that everyone does, you know, I do, you should be thinking about what to add. I'm totally okay with that. I might make a face if you want me to amend a minute that I wrote. But. <laughs> the, the only thing in the fire one, to me, that special events overtime, because that's been something I've been harping on this whole budget season, is just adding that, that, that kind of... Is that on the April 9th one? Yes. Yeah, yeah it's not on this and one. And then the police department, when they came in on the 11th, had the same question, asked them, and they do the same thing. They use that thing to offset expenses they know that's coming because of the end mass challenge or the... Um, <laughs> so there is more detail in that one if you actually look. Yeah. yeah. And there's more detail in the minutes actually if you look at that. I, yeah, I read it, but I don't recall it off the top of my head. But that's all I was just looking for. The so let us know what you want us to, to all add. All I want to do is confirm that the, in the, for the fire department, it's the same as the police department. Those okay. funds are being used to supplement their budget for no, you know, for town events to occur anyway. Are you okay with that, Joanne? Okay. The department's budget for events that are, you know, town sponsored events that occur annually. I don't know if they're actually town sponsored. Like the Pan Mass Challenge is not a town sponsored event. Well, but it's oh, well yeah, I, I, I make an example. How events you, in really town. Really events sponsored in town. In town. Sure. No, community yeah. events. Town. They're in, I guess the point is they're anticipated. Yeah, they're, they're foreseeable. Money, they're they're, 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 they're foreseeable. pretty much an annual event in town yeah. that happened in town. Yep. And they're big events. It is. Mm. The and there are challenge. really no funds for unforeseeable events. Right. Or, or it's left for with special the sponsor. Or, you know. Are you comfortable with that? Okay. So we'll add that to both the fire and the police. Well, the police already have it. Oh, please has fine. a little more detail, but so you could put it in the fire. So, is there a motion to approve April 9th first? As amended. As amended. Well, are there any other amendments first? Um, I will move it if, unless there's a second. Okay. No, right, so. right. so make sure I was at. Oh, there was one meeting that I was not here. Yeah, I was here. Was it that one? No, that was there. Was amended. Any further discussion on April 9th? Well, you're going to have a vote on the motion to amend, right? That has to pass or fail. And then you mo vote on the amended Well, minutes. technically that's true, though. We often just do it all in no, one so with the yeah. minutes. Yeah. Uh, technically, you're right. But yes, uh, the well, minutes there, we've been, our practice has been to just do it at the same time. Our practice is to do it wrong, so we'll continue to do it wrong. Got it. Okay. <laughs> just a point of order, just a I'm question, Larry, home. and I could be wrong on this. <laughs> if we haven't approved the minutes, then we don't, and they haven't been accepted, then they haven't been completed yet, therefore they don't have to be amended. Well, where's the record? Huh? There is no record. This is evidence. The, the, it's, it's memorializing a town action. You never know in the future when you're going to have to explain yourself. But, the but they were incomplete. Yeah, so they were incomplete. No okay. I'm not going to get into it. It's, it's a procedural I don't know. matter. I mean, they haven't been published or anything yet, right? So no. we're, we're approving them. They haven't been accepted or voted they on. They haven't been accepted. I mean, just I think from a logistic point, they're not part so of the. So if someone who was in attendance was left out and you said, oh, Jim was here, add them to the list at the top, you have to take a motion to amend that to add someone who was in attendance? Yes. Oh. I didn't think I didn't think you had to do that until after. This is not some clubhouse. Vote. This is Larry. The government. 
You know, I didn't, that was my mistake, if I'm mistaken. I didn't think we had a vote on it until afterwards. Because I recall last year when someone wanted to bring something up to re voted on, but he couldn't do it because he was on the negative side and I had to do it on their behalf. That is right. So I got right. corrected and I, I if yeah, I'm corrected, right. I'm a corrected, okay? Yeah. Don't make it personal. Who's making a person? So is so is my um, motion not okay? I think I think right. it takes. Oh, what he's saying it takes two votes: one to amend right. the minutes as they're presented, and okay. then one to actually vote on those changed minutes. Okay. So. So would you like to make the motion to amend? Right. Amend. And I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion on the amendment? This is just oh, it's just on the amendment. Oh, all in favor? I wasn't here. You are here, so oh, opposed uh, and abstaining. So five can't, zero can't one. You can abstain though. Five zero one. You're abstaining then. Five zero one. You're abstaining. Jim. Okay. That's right. You were <clears throat> at something fun. <laughs> so, Cold, but it's something fun. <laughs> so is there a motion to accept the minutes as amended? I will move that. Second. And Kevin. All in favor? Opposed, abstaining. So again, five zero one with Jim abstaining. Okay. It's, it's okay. Now we can move on to four eleven. Um, I'm actually debating whether to add that statement there. It's kind of there, but it's not there about the police department doing the same thing, having something called special events overtime, but really. It's used to supplement their budget, and there is no funds really for special events. It is inappropriately named. Yeah. Yeah, that's it probably does true. give the impression that if you're going to have a special event, that the police have put aside some money to help fund that special event for their services. But in fact, it's already been all allocated. Okay. So I, I guess I'd make that same comment to these minutes just under the police department. I will amend the presented minutes as such. Any other changes proposed? Everyone's read them. So is there a motion to approve the amended? A motion to amend. Sure. I will motion I will to amend. That. Karen? No, I can't. Oh, I oh you weren't here. here. You weren't even here. Karen's, Karen's acting as my I'm speaking for Kevin again. <laughs> <laughs> were you Maybe here? Oh, no, you were. Was Jim was here for that one. It was um, Mike and Karen weren't here. I'll make the motion to amend. Okay. Well, I think Jody did, right? Oh, I did, yeah. Can you say? Oh, you did? I'm sorry. Oh. All right. Four, 11 minutes. Hold on. Were you here on the 11th? Yes. Okay. Okay, all in favor of the amendment on the uh, special events overtime. Opposed, abstaining. So that's 501 with Karen. Now, is there a motion to accept the minutes of 411 as amended? Jim, Jim. I'll second. Jim and Kevin. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Abstaining. So that's 501. Okay. And we are up to date on minutes. Ooh. All right, any new business? Old business? I think my concerns have been addressed, so I'm good. All righty. Anybody else? Old business? Public access? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Yeah, just second. thank you for coming to these meetings. Kevin. Here to answer questions. Karen, all in favor? I enjoy it.